If you're not here to solve the mystery that is their history, to unveil Hijack City, exit out the back door. This drop nation. We in the mystery business. <laughs> Managas, welcome to the 99th installment of the Preston John investigation. Shalom to all the brand new wave surfers. Don't feel like, oh, I got to go back to Preston John number one. You need to enjoy this, though. You know what I'm saying? You need to just hop in, hop in the uh, DeLorean, <laughs> go back to the future. Shout out to my bro natural by law we we back to the future once we charged up my night <laughs> we all the way up man so yeah don't be afraid to belly flop hey up to all our contributors let's get it man i'm i'm going right in on avoiding manuscript my night we're going right in on avoiding manuscript you know i just want to introduce reintroduce it to you know some of the new wave surfers new to the classroom man come up pull up a seat you know what i mean and let's read about the void again, see how it connects to the Presta and see if there's anything, you know, with a dragonfly perspective, but not can connect to. You got that fire burning, man? <laughs> you got that water flowing? Hold up, man. Okay. Okay. And hey, we got that fire burning around here, man. Um, This particular investigative series it's all about keeping the code because without the code, we don't have a Preston John investigation. You know, we got to do a, a few things right to get this frequency to charge up, to see clearly, you know what I'm saying? And we see them in our classroom. <laughs> they don't even try to hide it, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, we're not here to, you know, be anything but welcoming, but at the same point, you know, let you know that we are who we are. You know what I mean? You're not going to, you know, do the same necromancy. You know, it's not going to work. Once we observe the particle, we can collapse the wave pattern on paradise, man. And the particle changes once it's observed. I'm just talking quantum. So their spells don't work once you observe them. Is all we try to say. All the necromancy in the world, once it's observed... And I mean, observed, you know, through a certain lens, not through Hijack City's lens, not through your personal lens, but through the lens of Hawa. Once we observe their magic, their necromancy, we collapse the wave pattern to only one possibility. And that's where the collective Mashiach comes into flow. You know what I'm saying? That's when we envision our world without them without that hijack we vision a free world for a naga free the naga free the dracon free phineas but we don't put no power before the most high no vanity on hawa's name nobody's forgetting about our rest day and charging up with the creator no slaying your brother no stealing from your bro no adultery, no breaking your oaths. No false witnessing, no covetous, honoring our framing, our shaper, our ama, abba. That's paradise. So we code keepers around here. So you best code up when you walk through the door. You best code up when you walk through the door. You best code up when you walk through the door. This Preston John 99. Lego. Let's talk Void. Let's talk Voided Manuscript. The uncrackable code, my naga. You know, I just want to see what they have to say about it. This out the nationalnews.com. Having been carbon dated to the 15th century before 1404, 1438, the Voynich manuscript has been hotly debated by scholars and has remained impervious to cold breakers 
for centuries. That's because y'all breaking the code. Y'all ain't keeping a code. <laughs> Let's go. The 240-page book was rediscovered by rare book dealer Wilford Voynich in 1912, although mentions of it date back to the 1600s. So it's called the Voynich because Wilford Voynich rediscovered this rare book right okay okay so it's not called the voiding we got to get out the illusion and by the time we get to see this book you know it, it's been reproduced they got their own pictures in it you're gonna see we're gonna surf the wave keep the fire burning and just look at the pictures of the voiding if you don't mind i'm just gonna flip the pages of the book i can't interpret it so Maybe we could see something. You know, you leave your comments and let me know what you think. I think that's pretty dope, man. I think that's pretty dope. We might start doing a uh, belly flop fundraiser to raise funds for Joy World to build our land up. And I think that would be pretty dope if we just, you know, have the fireplace going and have the water flowing and we just meditate on, you know, <laughs> what we can encode or decode. La Hua from the Voynich. I mean, if they if they still can't crack this code, I think maybe I'm not gonna need to meditate on it. Maybe have some conversation about it. You know, we'll go a couple pages at a time. We won't get too head heavy. They say it's 240 pages. We might just go a couple pages at a time. You can meditate on the Voynich and Nagas that want to support our cause, support Joy World. They can support, you know what I'm saying? And hey. Hey, out to the contributors, man. So I think that's a dope idea. Just let me know in the comments what y'all think about belly flop fundraisers. <laughs> BFF belly hashtag BFF belly flop fundraisers, man. <laughs> Where we raise money for Joy World and just see if we can crack, you know, whatever encryption is going on with this Voynich, man. The illustrated handwritten codex is believed to be Italian in origin. Wow. I just, I'm reading this, Managa, I'm reading this because I want you to see what they got to say about it. And I want you to see all the different things people got to say about it. And how some people say this, some people say that. He says Italian, somebody else is going to say Hebrew, <laughs> Hebrew. Indian, Georgian, <laughs> you go hear all these different languages. Managa, it's encrypted. It's one of the top encrypted books of all time, and it goes right back home to the Presta. And we're talking about it in Presta 99 because we're coming back home. Don't see Presta John 100 as a dismount because 100 is one. 100 is one. And I, I had no idea that we'll be saying this and doing this. And this wasn't our plan. If you go back and you listen to the original Prestas in the first few, the first 10, we didn't know it was going to be at Presta 100, man. But we on the road to Presta 100. The water to Hawaii, the water to you, Drop Nation, who continue to support with your great contributions, your comments. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get your comments. We're about to surf the wave. I'm having fun. This is a victory lap. It should feel that way to you. Getting to 100 is as much of an accomplishment to me as it should feel to you because you've been on this whole ride since 2016. And like I said, we'll continue to drop some drop on YouTube, but primarily our home base at 432thedrop.com. 432thedrop.com. That's our home base. Download the app and look out for the fifth wave. And the water for being patient with me to hit this checkpoint on my noggins. You know what I'm saying? All my noggins is waiting for this checkpoint. So I really appreciate y'all for allowing me to do this, man. And, you know, to have Shalom in my heart bone while I do it and uh, while we do it. You know what I'm saying? And this this is what we do. But like I'm saying, 100 is one. So once we get to 100, it's like a rebirth, you know. But now instead of having that rebirth on YouTube, you can witness it right here at 432thedrop.com. You know what I'm saying? Four three two to drop radio, man. So, you know, you can, you know, witness that higher ether, man. You know, once you spiral back to the same point, it's not like you went full circle. You spiraled up and you reached the same, you know, point. You know what I'm saying? 
but you at a higher elevation, you know what I'm saying? So we should be at a higher elevation at 100 than we were at number one. And if we ain't there, then we spiral down. Either way, you spiral this way or that way. You know what I'm saying? So allow a while that we can spiral up and get to this in, in, in class. I think we did it with class. You know, when you rock with the Preston series, the Preston investigation, you're going you're gonna to see class. You know, we did it without going too hard on nobody. You know, even the more and more war, we don't go too hard. You know, we just kind of, we, we passionate, you know, because this is unfolding through us we're not learning this through you y'all ain't teaching us right for a reason because <laughs> you know you ain't really allowed to you know hijack this frequency all the way to the hard bone man you're gonna have to allow us to choose up rediscover ourselves so why didn't you know have our our prophets say that one day somebody else's tribe is gonna wake us up we have to wake up we gotta wake up or else it ain't hawa so they're watching us wake up, man, Alahua. And this manuscript has never been decoded. I need you to understand with all their technology, MIT, no one can crack the code. They say it's a crypto Hebraic. He it got Hebrew, but it's stylized, Indianized, Georgianized. And this person said it got Italian. <laughs> If it was Italian, then you'll get an Italian interpreter, man. <laughs> Clearly ain't it Italian in origin, man. Unless we're just talking Rome or Romani. Talking Romani? Pomegranate? Okay, is that what they say? Owing to analysis on the paints and uses, a hitherto unknown writing system. But I thought it was Italian in origin. All right, man. Its author language and purpose remains a mystery. Are y'all into solving mysteries? We going we gonna just enjoy our story. It's a mystery to them, but we ain't missing. We ain't missing. We ain't gonna miss with our story, so it ain't no mystery, man. <laughs> we on a discovery path. Let's go. Illustrations inside include fictitious plants. How you know they fictitious, man? So I, I don't like the swerve you putting on it, man. You don't know nothing. You can't even crack the code, but you're going to call something fake. Hijack City. Dodge your own hijack. It's Preston 99. Man. <laughs> so they got plants, all right, fauna. Uh-oh. Dragons? Now, why would this person single out out of all the things in this 240-page book? It got plants, fauna, and dragons. It must got some serious dragon drop. They just ain't letting us know. And all the all the stuff I've seen, I've never seen a dragon. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna have a belly flop fundraiser. We're gonna do it weekly. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna raise money. We're gonna build our fence. We're gonna build for Nagaville. We're gonna you know, continue to build shelter for Nagas, you know what I'm saying? We're going to continue to buy land for Nagas, and that's how we're going to continue to flow with it. You know what I mean? Look out for us, man. But I've never seen dragons any time I've ever looked into the Voining Manuscript, and I don't ever think I've heard anyone even connect dragons to it. So this is why I wanted to know what they saying about it. So it must got so much dragons in it. He had to list it as the top three illustrations. We're going to have to find it when we meditate on it, man. Castles. Okay, who's castle? And astrological symbols. Okay, let's go. It's currently being held at Yale University's Bernick Rare Book and Manuscript Library. Whoa. <laughs> So this magical book, because look, we, we've been talking about their spell books. We were talking about their Necromica. You know, this might be more of a Naga flow, you know what I'm saying? And it's been encrypted and sealed like the book of Daniel say, you know, the books were sealed. Can you imagine a code that's so encoded that even their highest technology 
and geniuses cannot crack the code, but they know it got something to do with Hebrew, which means it has something to do with you, my nigga. And it's being held at Yale. Well, <laughs> and cryptographers, cryptographers, remember crypto, you know, it's all about the crypt, man. <laughs> Let's go. Cryptographers, all right? Including American and British code breakers. They're getting their best code breakers. Can't crack it. From both the first war, 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 world war <laughs> and the second world war have tried and failed over the years to make sense of it. Jane Marek Marcy a rector of Charles University in Prague, who came into possession of the Codex, wrote of it in 1665, for such sphinxes as they obey no one but their master. So this is what she wrote of it. For such sphinxes as they obey no one but their master. All right, man, all right, man. So check it. They got, you know, this is their, I guess, top uncrackable code manuscripts. They got something called cryptos. <laughs> it's crazy that they call them cryptographers. <laughs> And they're trying to break down cryptos. And then we got Krypton. All right, now we got our Superman flow going. One of the most famous unsolved codes in the world stands outside the CIA. It, what? It's the most famous unsolved code. You know it got to, it reminds me of them Georgia, what's it called? Uh, Georgia Stones or something like that. Got to be some super hijack written on this thing. Look like some. Some Emerald Thoughtism is going on, man. One of the most famous unsolved codes in the world. All right, the four-part sculpture, cryptos, from the ancient Greek word meaning hidden, was created by American artist Jim Sanborn and dedicated on November 3rd, 1990. So they just going to let somebody just put their monuments right in front of their buildings. Or does this come from, you know, someone in there, you know, elite, you know, hierarchy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Since then, crypto analysts, crypto analysts from all over the world have attempted to crack the four codes chiseled into its surfaces, succeeding in breaking three of four. The sculptures are covered in cipher text, including deliberate spelling mistakes and missing and additional letters, some featuring featuring aspects of Morse code. All right, so then they got the doorbell cipher. Code, which remains unsolved to the present day, was created by the acclaimed English composer Edward, El Edward Elgar, the crea creator of pomp and circumstance, wrote an enciphered letter in 1897 to Dora Penny, the daughter of a reverend whose stepmother was friends with Elgar's wife, All right, man. Then you got the Taman Shud case, T-A-M-A-N, right? It's a case that has baffled Australia. Okay, we're back to Australia. In the world since it first came to light in 1948, December 1st, 1948, Australian police found the body of a man at Somerton Park Beach, southwest of Adelaide, South Australia, his identity has never been discovered in an ancient text he was carrying led to a cipher that has been never solved. All right, so then you got the bill ciphers, man. All these numbers look like the matrix, man. <laughs> For fans of tales of buried treasure, the unsolved bill ciphers, B-E-A-L-E, -E, has it all buried gold, treasure maps, and secret locations only one of which has been so all right so a lot of this you know 
a lot of their stuff is more recent than the Voynich, man. The Voynich, you know, ain't coming from no 1900s and 1800s. Because, you know, they got their six secret codes that remain unsolved, right? From buried treasure to 15th century manuscripts are the only one that they kick coming from the 15th century, which is why, I mean, think about it, my line, if it's the 15th century, then we're talking the 1400s. That's when they found you. God. <laughs> and if it's connected to the Prester in any way, if it's connected to the Prester in any way, it's definitely talking about you. And they're connecting it with Hebrew and the Prester. So you know we're talking about we flow. So it's, it seems to me to be some type of sealed language of the kingdom of Prester John. That's so encrypted that hijack with all their technology and intelligences cannot solve it. And that's humbling to them, right? And then they put their images all in it. You see a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of their, you know, little painting de depictions. Because this, you ain't looking at the original. I want to see the original, man. I think they redid the images because I've never seen the dragons. I don't know what they talk about. They've done a lot to this thing. All right, I'm just digging on some Chola drop, some three Indies drop. Prester John was, was succeeded by his younger brother, Kolutonga, Chola the third. I'm digging on Prester John, I'm connecting him with the Pandy. You remember how this goes. David Sauce. All right, let's take it slow. Axelar David is the son of David. And he's the son of David that we're going to be speaking of. You know, he's, he's going to come up during uh, this um, in, in, installment of Preston John, you know what I mean? Because it's very interesting, you know, how this connects with the Genghis Khan flow. And maybe we can get something out of it, you know, in terms of the void, you know, let's connect it all. So. You got Axelark David. Like I say, he's the son of David. He's the son of King David. He's the son of Preston John. David is a title. So the next David is the next David. Like with the Queens, they got the title Davida. The next Davida is the next Davida. I'm just talking about the high Amazon Queens. David is a title like Solomon or Soli is a title. David is also Solomon because David is a Soli. Soli is a title of the family, you know, lineage connected with the Panians, the Cholas, and everything else that they talk about is in India over there. But we're in India Superior, and this is where it's all happening. All of their history connects right back to America. It seems like all these nations have stolen our history, rewrote it, and acted like it was ancient. Chinese history is American history. <laughs> Indian history, Hindu, all that is American history. All that Egypt talk is American history, man. Biblical history is American history. I know you're like, well, what about the rest of the world? All this is connected. All this is the three Indies, including Antarctica, so, or Australia's. So I'm not excluding Europe and Asia and all that. I'm just saying that's one of the Indies, but it's all happening as a nucleus coming from right here in Asia major, India major, land, home, home base, home team of the Pandion, Preston John. We're talking Pandions, we're talking Cholas, right? I'm just belly flopping. Let's go, man. I'm, I'm surfing away. <laughs> Preston John. Oh, wow. Preston John was succeeded by his younger brother, Kolu Tonga, Chola III, when Preston John retired to be a Christian monk or hermit. Kolu Tonga helped Preston John's son, Vikarama Pandian by his Panian wife to become Panian king. So you know he didn't retire to be no Christian monk, all right? 
But we're going to get back to Nestorians, Nestorianism, this Nestor flow, old king renowned for wise counsel flow. This is what we've been saying, you know, <laughs> from the top. We've been connecting you with the Nestors, right? We've been connecting you with the old cons, the, the old ancient love song, right? So all this monk business, you're just talking about, you know, someone who's getting solitude with the creator, you know what I'm saying? Making making peace, making shalawam. So it says, Presta's brother helped Presta's son, Vikarama, become Pani and King. So again, Presta John is Raja here, Raja Chola the second. His son would also have these titles. I'm talking specifically about David. When Genghis Khan rode up, he found Khan David and his son, you know, David, who was, you know, Prince David, you know what I'm saying? And I believe that this is the David that Genghis Khan killed. I don't think he killed the Preston. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? But I think if a David fell, I believe it was this David. We're just talking Genghis Khan. Now, this is possibly the same son that Kulodunga helped become the next Pandian king. He is the XLR. Let's go. He said, help Prester John's son, Vikarama, become or Pandian by his Pandian wife to become Pandian king. Presta John's Vikarama Pandian. Kolutanga helped Presta John's son, Vikarama Pandian, by his Pandian wife to become Pandian king. So whichever wife is also Pandian, this case, we're talking Lady Hannah. She pops up no matter how you search in Genie, you, you're gonna keep running into Lady Hannah. But we just talking Anna <laughs> or Ania. Uh, all these are titles. She's the lady of Ania, uh, you dig. Is she the pan in wife? We're putting all our history together. We're bringing in the Hindu history, you know what I'm saying, with the India superior American history, indigenous history of America, with the biblical Hebrew history, with this pandian Hindu, you know, India flow. I'm showing you my noggin, and it's all the same thing which makes us ask one single question. Who are y'all if you stolen our history? I'm not talking to the layman, you know, I'm just saying to whoever's in charge, you know. <laughs> Who are you? If the Chinese ain't the Chinese, then who is the current Chinese? You know what I'm saying? If, if the... Uh, Indian ain't the original Indian superior, then who, who are you? you know? If the European ain't the original European, then who are you? What land can you claim indigenously with documentation? I'm just saying because it gets kind of frustrating <laughs> to keep trying to, you know, put our puzzle back together and everyone's claiming these pieces of the puzzle. We rocking with you as long as you're choosing up. But you're gonna have to bear with us while we put Humpty Dumpty back together again, put our puzzle together. So we don't know, I can't confirm or deny this author's take on these wars. Everyone has their perspective, but you know, we're on Preston 99, we've earned our right to have a perspective. We've earned our right to have a hypothesis. 
So Vikarama's son, Jatavar Varman, rebelled against his Cholan cousins, but was defeated and submitted to Cholan overlordship. Jatavaraman's brother, Mara Varman, on succeeding him, attacked the Cholans and became the emperor of the three Indies. Now, this is all after Prester John stepped down to become a monk, they say. All right. So everyone's battling for the throne. Man, just like the Mongol history, right? You see how much this overlaps with the Mongol flow. So how can these two histories overlap like this? Back to Anatoly for the Manco, phantoms, and duplications. The Mongo flow overlaps with the Hindu, you know, India flow. Overlaps with the Australia flow. <laughs> overlaps with the, you know, Asia flow, China flow, Japan flow. Everybody flow. Africa flow, because a lot of that is happening right over here, man. As far as the history. We in it for truth, man. We ain't in it to bust everybody's paradigm to pieces, you know what I'm saying? But didn't you come to this world? Didn't you come into this world seeking the truth? It's not called a distraction for a hamster to sniff around the cage that you put him in. You know what I'm saying? It's, that's not a distraction. That hamster wants to know his environment, her environment. We want to know our story. We want to know our environment. That's why we, you know, search. That's why we dig on it. That's why we ask the questions. Never have I said I got the answers. But I said I promise to ask the right questions. And we promise to ask and keep asking the right questions. And maybe and possibly they'll lead to the correct answers. Allahuwa. Hey, welcome to the fifth wave, man. We popping off. He restored the policy of religious tolerance in the empire like his grandfather, Preston John. Religious tolerance. So well, he, he kept the code. However, his son, Marvarman Sundari II, was defeated by Rajinder Chola III, the grandson of Kolutanga Chola III. Kolutanga is the brother of Preston. So here we go with the family wars again, just like the David wars, Davidic wars. Marvarman, the second son, Jatavarman the third, seized back the throne of the three Indias. His son Marvar Rambam. Sound like Moses Rambam. Remember Rambam? All right. So, wow. so his son Mara Var Rambam was killed by his illegitimate son Vera when he declared his legitimate son Sundara as his heir. Civil war broke out as Sundara asked for Muslim help. The Muslims eventually seized power for themselves. Oh. <laughs> it's a more and more war. So if he wasn't Muslim, he's asking for Muslim help. They took it for themselves. <laughs> Sundara's daughter, who married the Australian Javanese king of Rubadi, Gadi, and Mani. Now, remember all this David Rubini talk? Go get the last drop. We just <laughs> belly fly back to Australia. Belly fly back to Rabadi Gadi Mani, which is Ruben Gad and Manasseh. We talk in Preston. So how does Ruben Gad and Manasseh just pop into the Sandara Chola Pandian conversation, man? How we suddenly just start talking about Ruben Gad and Manasseh, which means we must be talking Judah. We must be talking Ephraim. We must be talking to tribes of Israel the whole time. But you think we're talking India. And they read their history today and say, oh, everything started here. You guys took everything from us in India. We say, you forgot. You're in India inferior. This is India superior. 
And as ancient as Indian inferior is, I'm only saying that because the Khan of Khans make sure he was in superior India for you know reasons of energy, frequency, and vibration. That India there can't stand next to this India here in antiquity, in connectivity, and in cold keeping. When I talk about other guys and other powers and, and the Vishnas and whatever they, they worship in, we're talking about the creator, man. Most high over everything is happening here. I don't know if they knew it over there in that land. I don't know. I can't confirm or deny. But I know we knew Hawaii here. I know that you know we knew Hawaii right here. This is why we popping off from right here. And this is why they watching us from right here. Because I don't see no one over there waking to knock over here up. And I know we got real Nagas in India. You're not inferior. <laughs> I'm just saying this is India superior. And it's order over chaos. No more pretending our story is happening anywhere else. Look at what they call this, man. Look how confused these people are. Look how they want to confuse us. Not no more. The Nagas are aware. We are in code. So we're going to talk about their code breaking. But I just, you know, <laughs> belly flop <laughs> into the ch cholas and Roger, Haraja, Panty and Jatteron flow. But, you know, rock with me. Watch this. Watch this. We're back to talking Australia. Where's Australia? You remember Australia. <laughs> Australia's, man. We just talking to Antarctica. <laughs> con, con. Terry de Fuego. No ice. Remember, it just got frozen over. Australia. Javanese king of Rubani, Gadi, and Mani. Proclaimed empress of the three Indias. And from about 1350 until 1530. So we're talking about Sundara's daughter who married the Australian king of Rubati. So what would, <laughs> what would uh, Ruben Gad and Manasseh have to do with Australia? Someone left a comment and say, hey man, I'm Australian. Don't try to take our history. <laughs> Why do you gotta make it about race? I'm making it about a tribe. They're making it about race. And if you are a Caucasian Australian and that history in Australia ain't your history, talk to the Aboriginals about their story and maybe you'll connect yourself to something greater than his story. I'm not taking Australia away, man. I'm connecting it for you. Because all this was no ice. And your Australia was connected to this. And these are Nagas popping off. Because we're all connected to this. This is India Superior. Everybody afraid we're going to take their history because we unpilling the layers. If you're not here for the mystery, <laughs> if you're not here to hear our story, exit out the back door. You can't have Australia. You can't have Europe. You can't have Africa. <laughs> Whatever y'all want, you can't have. It. You're going to fall back in the back of the class. And you're going to have to get this work. What would Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh have to do? with Australia.
unless we just talking Tarazanta. You know. Tarazanta. Wow. Sakai Lego. Easy work, my naga. And we will be talking about Moroni some more. <laughs> Cause he's all over the place in Australia. I said, I said, he's all over the place in Australia. The same land that is called Australia, which means southern. Any southern areas, Australia's. Don't take my Australian history. Any southern land is Australia's. You want it all? Of course you do. Of course you do. You want the truth until we uncover you. Hijack 101. I'm talking Tarzanta. Tarzanta, I'm talking Holy Land. Did we forget? I'm not saying Holy Land. They know what Tarzanta is. Now it's Santa Claus, man. What does Santa got to do with Jerusalem? Nothing. It's about saints. Despite the meaning of Tara Santa, Latin is Holy Land. Tara Santa and Holy Land are different places in Jerusalem. But generally, Jerusalem is a part of the Holy Land. If you're talking Tarzant, and I'm talking Tarzant, and we're both talking Australia's, then what would Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh have to be doing in Australia's? They're in Holy Land that just got frozen over because of this Ice Age, little Ice Age business, big ass Ice Age if it froze up in the entire Antarctica, allow what? We're just talking Tarzant, holy land, holy land. Jerusalem, right? Connected to South America, my naga. It's not like it's Antarctica. It's so far away. It's connected to South America, my naga. <laughs> oh, wow. What do you mean? How could it be holy land? It's the same land. It's just the part that's been blocked out of your conscious as an icy tundra, you know, an icy in uninhabitable tundra, an icy desert. Just an icy desert, huh? Just an icy desert, huh? Hey, um, hey, fair use in your caboose, man. Uh, copyright, uh, what's it called? One oh something, one oh seven. Gotta, I gotta do go through all this, man. Uh, allowance is made for fair use purposes criticism comments news reporting teaching some scholarship some recon you know education you know, we're just asking some questions all right so i gotta use this uh want to use this quick clip right here man. oh it's another one it's another one but uh a mission to the end <laughs> it's two minutes long shout out to nature video all right shout out to nature video fair use right 107 i just want to just let you know if you're talking tarzan and i'm talking tarzan to my night and this is what we're talking about man it's all happening you know what i mean Mm -hmm. 
Still got the fire burning. Fair use. 107. I got it. All right. Education and research. That's it. Fair use. <laughs> you know, YouTube be tripping. Be tripping, boss. All right. Tarzan has no ice on its cap. I mean, no cap on its chest. You know what I'm saying? No cap on Antarctica's chest bone. I do see Phoenicia. I do see Holy Land, Tarzan. Holy Land, my not. But it's all ice and it's all connected. But it's out of our consciousness. And we think it's just ice. But what has a scientist recently discovered about Antarctica as it's melting, boss? Antarctica has revealed fossilized plant trees preserved deep under the ocean system. Antarctica has fossilized plant roots, boss. Perfectly preserved, boss. Under the ice sheet, boss. Perfectly preserved, boss. All that Tarasanta is paradise. Seems this freezing landscape was once home to a lush forest. 90 million years ago, Rainforest existed in West. Let's get it back. Let's get it back. Let's get it back. Get it back. A mission to the Antarctic has revealed fossilized plant trees preserved deep under the ocean since the time of the dinosaurs. It seems this freezing landscape was once home to a lush forest. 90 million years ago. A temperate rainforest existed in West Antarctica, only 900 kilometers away from the South Pole. Get it back. Deep under the ocean since the time of the dinosaurs. Let's just take our time with this. Because it confirms exactly what we've been just trying to rip. Rip the veil off a of hijacked city, you know, it, it confirms exactly what we're ripping, you know what I'm saying? The spell is coming off because I've never seen nothing like this. And shout out to Drop Nation, y'all dropping this drop. I can't keep up with it, like you know, I, I don't I don't remember who dropped this one. But y'all popping off, man. Okay, I can't even keep up. So excuse me. You popping off, Drop Nation. All right. Any questions? <laughs> it's all happening, man. Now they said dinosaurs, you know, we're talking dragons. So they automatically, the first 10 seconds, connected Antarctica with paradise and dragons. Let's go. Antarctic has revealed fossilized plant trees preserved deep under the ocean since the time of the dinosaurs. It seems this freezing landscape was once home to a lush forest. 90 million years ago, a temperate rainforest existed in West Antarctica, only 900 kilometers away. The rainforest existed forest. 90 million years ago. They just went back 90 million years on you, my nugget. Do you believe this was popping off 90 million years ago? <laughs> or is this what was popping off, I don't know, in the 1500s? Maybe even 1600s. Maybe even 1700. <laughs> huh? 90 million kajillion years ago, my nine. This is Antarctica. This is Antarctica. A 
temperate rainforest existed in West Antarctica only 900 kilometers away. Stop. Stop, man. All right, man. Hey, hello, wow, man. Glad we got that fire burning, man. I need it. I'm glad we got that water flowing because I need it. Where go? I want you to see how close. I want you to focus on how close Antarctica, Terra de Fuego, is to South America, right? Wow. Wow. I mean, other maps show a river that's going like right from South America through so-called Antarctica. It's called Terra de Fuego. Everything's hot. <laughs> there ain't no cat on Antarctica's chest bone. There ain't no ice. 1520. And if he says there's a rainforest, temperate rainforest, that kind of reminds you, I don't know, of the Amazon. Why? It reminds me of the Amazon, which is literally connected to Antarctica. So whatever rainforest is popping off in Antarctica, it might be like the mother forest of the Amazon, the mother forest of everything. You got a rainforest in Amazon connected right to Terra Fuego. Just look at the proximity. It's the same rainforest. Yeah, I'm just surfing the way, surfing the wave in the map, pat, map, pat, you know. Hope you're enjoying it, my nagi. It always feels good to make sure we preserve the drop. And we know that others are going to take the drop and they're going to do what they want to do with it. They're going to twist it. They're going to turn it. They're going to write books about it. <laughs> they're going to do what they do. But we know that this wave belongs to the tribe, man. Alawa. Cool. Hashira. What do you see here? You see life, you see trees in Antarctica, Australia's, right? Tarzan, too. You don't see no demon devils. You just see people around a fire. You see animals. You see cities. You see stuff. You see rivers. This is what we're talking about. So in this two minute, you know, uh, expose that we're watching, <laughs> chopped and screwed. <laughs> yeah, man. The same rainforest from Pantagonia, <laughs> from Chile, from the Amazon. The same roots are connected right here in Tarzan. You see clearly. We're talking the Amazon, but in Australia's, <laughs> in Antarctica, in the southerly regions. In West Antarctica, only 900 kilometers away from the South Pole. Johan Klages and his team set out on a ship with a special drill to extract a cord material stretching down 30 meters into the sea floor. 
when we recovered the core, we could already see what's inside and that it was very unusual. And therefore we decided to scan them in a CT scanner back home. So what we see here is the, the overview of the CT scan core and the yellow strata we see now is the sandstone. And now we transition into the network of fossil roots. And we can nicely see how the roots are connected with each other and are pristinely preserved. Y'all got the fire burning? Okay. Pristinely, pristinely preserved. Let me just get that back and we out of here. Let's go. We transition into the network of fossil roots and we can nicely see how the roots are connected with each other and are pristinely preserved. We have thin roots, we have thick roots, and it's really a network as you would. Hawa preserved the land. He let them hijack and pollute all over the place, but ain't no Kim trailing over there. I guarantee you. You got straight preservation. Allow a while. The network of fossil roots. And we can nicely see how the roots are connected with each other and are pristinely preserved. We have thin roots, we have thick roots, and it's really a network as you would go to the forest near you and drill into the current forest. Wow. Studying the core, including analysis of fossilized pollen and spores, is revealing more about the environment of this ancient rainforest. It revealed a very warm temperature for... <laughs> they don't want to say paradise but they just showed you a depiction of what would be paradise a very warm temperature uh, I mean, we got that fire burning all right a very warm temperature like uh i don't know <laughs> fuego like fuego Can't make this stuff up, my naga. We got scientists backing up and validating everything we dropping. Antarctica was a warm climate. He went back 90 million years. Little Ice Age is telling you something happened recently. They're calling it little, but it's major. It is the big eye. It is the Ice Age. Ice Age is now code word for little Ice Age. They talking dragons and dinosaurs. Yeah, we still got Phineas popping off. Dragons are recent. All this is recent. Dinosaurs are recent. What happened, man? Huh? What happened? Yeah, we should definitely <laughs> do a BFF, man, belly fly fundraiser and just dig on maps, you know, play some tribal music. <laughs> dig on some maps, man. Meditate on a Voynich manuscript, man. And just choose up, you know. And, you know, keep it cool, man, man. Keep it raising for joy world. We are building the most beautiful fence ever built. <laughs> Allow one. Uh... Hey, he said a warm climate, man. <laughs> fuego. Terra Fuego, man. Ain't called Terra Cold. Terra Ice. It's Terra Fuego. Or Australia. Let's talk Australia, man. Let's go. Let's get the last piece of this. For this latitude and annual mean temperatures are similar <clears throat> to those of northern Italy. It would be very uncertain 
that also dinosaurs and insects lived in that environment and in an environment that Dragons. was dark for um, about four months uh, during the year because uh, we had the polar night. This was one of the warmest periods in Earth's history, with carbon dioxide levels several times higher than they are today. The new find provides a window into this ice-free polar world. And Johan hopes that studying these past extremes wow. could help us prepare for the future. These extreme greenhouse climates are important for us to understand uh, in, in full detail because uh, it uh, allows a look into the future how the planet might look like if we excessively um, emit uh, CO2 as we do right now. Wrong. What it does do is allow them to try to be oracles and predict what's going to happen when this ice melts in the future. Yeah, it got everything to do with the future. It got nothing to do with, oh, carbon. Same thing with their global warming. Carbon emissions got nothing to do with none of that. The ice is melting because Nagas is keeping the cold. <laughs> the earth is revitalizing, rebooting, coming back, you know, fully online, you know, everything sparking off and the areas that were cursed with cold it, are now being restored. The trees are being restored. The Naga's being restored. It's all happening because we've collapsed the wave pattern by observing the cold particle. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, thanks, man. Uh, nature video. You know, I appreciate that. We appreciate you allowing us to watch your video. Fair use, fair use. <laughs> so what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, we're talking about Australia. Let's go back. <laughs> I said all that to say. <laughs> Why is Australia connected with the tribes of Israel, Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh, and the tribes that, you know, are in rulership, you know what I'm saying, what they're calling these Jedis <laughs> or these Judas, you know what I'm saying, the tribe of David, Preston John, has the scepter, no matter what history you're going to look into, the Mongol history, the Wong Kong, you're going to go into this history, you know what I'm saying? The three Indias, the Pandian emperors, you know what I'm saying? Christians got their fables on Preston John, you know, king of of uh, king of the Indians, you know, all this stuff. So he always has the scepter, King David. Charlemagne calls himself after David. Genghis Khan hijacks the Khan and hijacks the title David. Why? Why are they hijacking the throne? Well, Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh have everything to do with Tarzante. And that's really what it comes down to. That this Australia's hijack city. This Australia's is Tarzante. And Tarzante is holy land. So they're uncovering a brand new rainforest that's been preserved in Holy Land. That's, you know, that's all Hawa. Because we weren't ready for it. Not, not if we had a cold. And they can't hijack it because Hawa chose to preserve it. Whatever magic they put on it was allowed, you know. Whatever the devil do is allowed, you know. Their devil still works for the creator. Believe it or not, just read the book of Job, you know. <laughs> and that's really actually a very important point. I'm glad we uh, brought that up, man. Glad we brought that up, man. Let me. Let's pull up the book of Job right quick. That's a great point. Allow what? Because the more we talk about the necromancy, we might get on it a little bit more, man. But you know, I'm not, you know, look, we, we saw the evidence of what we need to see. <laughs> the Moors got a spell book. 
They're walking around the walking around AQ. They pop it off of Ice Age and treaties and everything else, slaughter. You know, they won't try above because they are behind and masterminding this takeover. I'm talking to the Moabites, you know what I'm saying? The Canaan Knights, the Jebusites, the Amalekites, you know what I'm saying? All of the Confederacy. It was impossible to try but with you because you was behind the whole thing. Like I said, that's like, that's like, you know, being pinched, you know, going to, having to go do some time and then your co-defendant turn on you, you know, and you're like, damn, man, if you would have stuck with me, if, if, if you wouldn't have done that, we both would have been free. <laughs> and then you find out that your co-defendant was the one that set up the whole bus. There ain't no if he would have been on your side. He set you up. That's how we feel about this more situation, this more ish situation. There was no chance. There's never been that chance. Back to biblical times. So to my Nagas that's joining these confederacies today, at least know what you're joining and have a purpose. You better be connected to MHOE, man. <laughs> or what are you doing it for? If you're not going to connect directly with Hawaii, with the creator. If you care about the creator, you care about the creator's seed. If you're saying that ain't the seed of Jacob. You're saying that ain't what the Prester is rocking with. and ain't what the Prester is fighting for. Ain't what Joshua's fighting for. The Kumsay's fighting for. The Karan Kahawa are fighting for. Dragon Canoe is fighting for. The high Amazon queens are fighting for. The House of Roos is fighting for. You trying to tell us that we ain't nothing to you? Because you want where are we at? You want our lot? We ain't nothing to you? You can mow us down? Cut us off from being a nation so we never remember our name again? Know what you're joining because you're going against the creator. I will say mercies of Hawa forever to all generations while I make your faithfulness known with my mouth. For I have said forever is mercy built in the very heavens. You establish your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen Hawa says, I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn into David, my servant. Forever I will establish your seed and build up your throne to all generations. Lawa. Trying to say we ain't shit. I'm in Psalms 89, verse 21. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. Who found David? What man is responsible for finding David? You searching for David. Who found David? Hawa wow. <laughs> found David. Verse 21, I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. You can't touch him. Though you try, try, try again. Why? 
who I say with my right hand, with, with my hand, shall he be established, whom with whom my hand shall be established. Hawa's entire hand is established through Dawi. Who is Prester John? The Magi, the Dalai Lama, yourself take the wheel, man. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. Not you, man. I don't care what you say about him. I don't care what you write about him. You didn't find him. You still looking. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact from him nor the son of wickedness afflict him. Who's the son of wickedness? We're going to talk about it. We're going to go to Job. Just understand and understand. You go against Hawaii, you go against Hawaii's people, I will beat to pieces his adversaries before him. You go against Hawaii, you go against the tribe, I will be to pieces his adversaries, Hawa says, and smite them that hate him. You want to hate on us? Because we calling you out? Speaking clearly? In a language we can all understand. You're going against the chosen. Think about it. Meditate on that with due meditation. You've been doing it the whole time. Papu Bull, 1452. Who is the son of wickedness that cannot afflict him? Wickedness can't afflict him. Wickedness can't afflict him. David has to bring it on himself. But if David's in cold, <laughs> wicked. The wicked can't afflict him. <laughs> Who's the wicked? Yeah. Now it fell upon a day, Job chapter one, verse six, that the sons of God came to present themselves before a wow. Who are the sons of Hawa that come to present themselves before Hawa? Job chapter 1, verse 6. Now it came a day, the sons of Hawa, we're talking the dragons, my nagging, let's go, came to present themselves. They had a meeting. All right, so the dragons, the angels, the sons of Hawa, you know, like Isaiah 6, singing, holy, holy. Just got to get it real clear around here so it cannot be misconstrued or misinterpreted. Verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw Hawa sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled with the Filled the temple, Hawa's train. All right. <laughs> okay. What does it mean, right? Above him stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he did fly. And one called unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy. Is Hawa. The whole earth is full of his glory.
And the posts of the door were moved at the voice of them that called, and the house was filled with smoke, my God. Because the dracons with six wings are popping off, singing holy, holy glory to Hawaii. These are pure water, seraphim. Seraph means burn, burning ones. But you know, we're just talking etymologies. What's a seraph? We're talking seraphim. Winged, human like, celestial creatures that hovered above Hawa's throne in Isaiah's dream. Seraph literally the burning one so you got to understand you got a angel seraph but it's a burning one right so you got smoke filling the temple these are burning ones Khan. they're singing holy holy to hawa seraphs were traditionally regarded as burning or flaming angels <laughs> sounds like a flaming dragon to me i don't know about you what you want to picture a man with a wings? That's more acceptable to you? Not a fire-breathing dragon that every culture has a has a, a form of in their mythos. Every culture has depictions of dragons, but you want to put a man with wings, a flaming angel. Though the word seems to have some etymological sense of flying. A flying man with wings, right? Or a fire-breathing dragon, perhaps from confusion with the root of Arabic sharafa, be lofty. Ooh, lofty fly. Let's go. Some scholars identify it with a word found in other passages interpreted as fiery, flying. Oh, serpent. Well, <laughs> back to alchemy, right? Back to alchemy, right? Love to Miss D and the copper color, because when they say serpent, and we're talking seraph now, we're talking holy, holy to Hawa, right? We're talking the dragons or flaming angels that's in the throne of Hawa giving glory. Do you think that serpent is an impersonal serpent? of an impersonal nature. You think that serpent singing holy, holy to Hawa is unconscious, bursting into consciousness? You think that serpent is male and female, androgynous? You think that serpent is a monstrous snake? You think that serpent is the cosmic spirit, the supreme serpent? that brings everything to life, but kills everything, boss. No, that sounds like the hijacked serpent in Genesis that got to go on his belly. Wow. <laughs> wow. We're talking dragon, which is the living spirit can be extracted. It's the vessel in which the spirit is contained. Unlike ordinary mercury philosophical quicksilver <laughs> you are philosophical philosophical <laughs> to them you are mysterious to them i said we like our mysteries around here but we ain't missing our story not no more they don't understand the substance you are they don't understand it's of an unknown origin, boss. Even in alchemy, it's unknown. That sounds like Hawa representing this living spirit, the vessel, my naga. They say, man, this, this dragon represents water and power. It represents renewal. That sounds like Hawa. That all sounds like this snake serpent, this monstrous snake that kills everything, boss. It slays the dragon. Whoa, how can a dragon be all about slaying a dragon unless we're talking a serpent with the act of conientio, the bringing together of opposites? And how do you know it slays the dragon? 
because it says right here that to slay the dragon, to slay the dragon, my nigga, only the act or the product of conientio, the coming together of opposites, can slay the dragon. And they just told you that the serpent is unconscious <laughs> when the act of conientio or the coming together of opposites or the slaying of the dragon occurs, the serpent is frequently part of the symbolism because the serpent is always behind the conientio. The serpent is always behind the slaying of the dragon with conientio, with the coming together of opposites, slaying the alchemical dragon. Managa, this is deep energy flow. How do they stop your flow? They brought opposites on you, man. Conientio. Who's rocking with Conientio? The serpent. Because <laughs> with these opposites, the serpent is frequently a part of the whole confederacy. Their androgyny is their Baphomet, is their Mahomet, is the monster. Nah. We don't need no cosmic serpent, no cosmic spirit. We don't need no spirit from the cosmos, getting the energy from the planets, bringing everything to life, but killing everything. We don't need that. That's the serpent. And this is letting us know that from a philosophical or an alchemical perspective, the serpent cannot be the dragon the vessel in which the Ruach is contained. Some alchemical texts mention a process to identify the spirit or the soul of all things. We're talking creator flow, which means we must. We're talking seraphim. <laughs> the alchemical dragon, the burning one singing holy, holy to Hawa. This is dragon flow. They say fiery flying serpent. The serpent is the impersonal nature, my mind, <laughs> of the unconscious as it's just now bursting in the consciousness like the AI. They are jacking our flow. They are extracting the life through their magic, through their spells. They are extracting the life spirit from a naga. They are slaying the dragon with Connie and Shio. The bringing together of opposites. You got their Masonic checkerboard, black, white, black, white, black, white. Connie and Shio, my naga. They got it in her head bone. Because Connie and Shio is the coming together of opposites that can slay the alchemical dragon. Huh? We're not talking serpent, we're talking dragon, and they're slaying it. Hawaii ain't got no serpents around him singing holy, holy. Hawaii got fire breathing dragons. Because the dragon is not, cannot be the impersonal serpent. Not when you're the alchemical dragon. You are the Ruach, right? They are extracting it, Khan. Huh? You are the vessel, my naga. You are the dragon, my naga. You are the dragon, my naga. What's the definition of America? The copper color Khan found here. Right. You are the dragon, my naga. What's the dragon? In 1828. Kind of winged serpent? No, not impersonal nature. That ruach is contained. We're talking that kundalini energetic flow. It does. It it don't have an image. It's energy, dragon lines, frequency, ley lines, vibration. Much celebrated in the romances, but now we're just talking a hero. Now we're just talking a hero. Love to Templar. A fiery shooting media. That's funny because so is a Preston. 
so is a prester. And they are scared of the violence of the prester. And they're scared of the violence of the dragon. A fierce or violent person. Whoa, right? <laughs> so who are they extracting the life from? The dragon, the alchemical dragon, the alchemical dragon, the vessel in which the life, the spirit is contained. The living spirit can be extracted. How? They got to slay the dragon with their what? Conientio. That's how they slay the dragon. Conientio, the coming together of opposites. Got it. The dragon's being slayed by the alchemical serpent. A fierce or violent person, male or female, is a dragon. This man or woman is a dragon. Man or woman? Is a dragon? Yeah. The living spirit can be extracted. Seraph, burning ones, fiery, flying dragons. Six wings, seraphim, dragons. Singing holy, holy to Hawa. The whole earth is full of his glory. <laughs> These dragons are popping off. Isaiah 6, verse 4 the posts of the door were moved at the voice of them that called, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, a of host. Then flew unto me one of these dragons, one of these flaming, fiery, burning ones, my naga. <laughs> one of these burning ones, the burning ones, the fiery, flying dragons. Flew over, la wa, flew over to Isaiah with a glowing stone in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar, and he touched my mouth with it and said, Hold up. Okay. <laughs> Lo, this has touched me. Your lips and your iniquity is taken away. Hawa, and your sin is exp expiated. And I heard the voice of Hawa saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and tell the people, Hear you indeed, but understand not. And see you indeed, but perceive not. They think they know, but they don't understand. They don't understand. Job chapter one. Let's get it like it's the first time. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was wholehearted and upright and one that feared Hawa and shunned evil and there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters his possessions also were seven thousand sheep three thousand camel five hundred yoke of oxen five hundred she donkeys and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the children of the east and his son used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one upon his day. And they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. So when their feast was done, Job had to sanctify them because whatever they were feasting to, needed to be sanctified notice job wasn't there with him <laughs> for a reason job said it may be that my sons have sinned and blasphemed a while in their hearts 
does their job continually. So he already knew what they was worshiping, man. Now, verse six, it says, now it fell upon a day that the sons of Hawa, these dragons, came to present themselves before Hawa. And Satan came also among them. So we just had a question about wickedness. Who's the son? Who's the seed of wickedness? Because we're going to get right back here. To the royal house. We're putting together our story again. Remember, Psalms 89, the enemy shall not exact from him who, David, my servant, my hand shall be established with him. The enemy can't touch him, can't touch the frequency of that way. The enemy, the Satan, which is enemy, right? <laughs> Got to get it like it's the first time around here, man. It's Preston 99. Satan, devil, got you, got you. Adversary. To show enmity, to oppose, to plot against, right? Like the more and more war, you would be our adversary. You, the, you are the Satan that do the treaties, right? You are the Satan, one who opposes, right? obstructs or acts as an adversary you are the devil you are satan adversary the enemy shall not exact from him nor the son of wickedness afflict him we said Who's this enemy and who's in charge of the wickedness? Who's the Satan? But you need to understand right away is that this adversary has an invite to the meeting among the top dragons and the creator. Creators having a meeting. The sons of God came to present themselves before Hawa. Satan is late to the party. Satan came also among them. Hawa said to Satan, whence come thou? Like, where you coming from? <laughs> Satan said, you know, <laughs> going to and fro in the earth, walking up, walking down, you know, jamming everybody up. Hawa didn't say, what the hell are you doing here in my high-level meeting? Hawa said, where you coming from, man? Where you coming from now, man? He said, you know, man, going up here and there, up and down, left, right, jamming everybody up, jamming everybody up. <laughs> and Hawa said, all right, cool, cool. Um, that is your job. We're talking Job, you know, which means persecute in Hebrew. So the job <laughs> of this Satan adversary who plots against another, opposes and plots against <laughs> his job is to plot against who? Now, Hawaii said to this adversary, hey, you consider my servant Job? There's none like him in the earth, a wholehearted and upright man, one that fears Hawaii and shuns evil. Then this adversary answered and said, 
Does Job fear a why for nothing? And then he goes on to plead his case. Hey, man, he only fears you because you do everything for him. Could you do everything for him? So they put Job to the test. You see, you can't be afflicted in cold. This whole story opened up, you know, to show something out of cold might be happening in the house of Job. Job had to sanctify this meeting, <laughs> this feast with his children, you know, and whatever they was, you know, uh, burning their, uh, you know, <laughs> whatever offerings they have, might have made. Job had to sanctify. And then the story is incredible as it goes and it keeps being tested and keeps being tested. And he's finally found you know, made worthy and he's, he's given a brand new start and a brand new flow and everything is multiplied for him for abundance. You've been tested like Job, Manami. Everything's been taken from you. Your family's been ripped apart. Your riches are gone. But to those that persevere, the abundance will be a thousandfold what you would have had without the test and what you've ever had before. Their wickedness was late to the meeting. He works for the creator. He came to the meeting that the creator called. Satan came among them. Hawah said, where you coming from? Where thou?" Where comest thou? Whence comest thou? When when did you show up, man? Where you coming from, man? When did you come? When did you get here? <laughs> Where the hell you coming from? Hey, going to and fro, walking up and down, all around the earth. There was no war that popped off with the sons of Hawa and Satan. There was no war between their adversary and the creator. This wickedness cannot afflict you in cold because it works for the cold. <laughs> it works for a while. The enemy, the Satan cannot exact from him, nor the sons of wickedness afflict him. But to those that are true adversaries, because they are following some narrative or they are following some frequency. I will beat to pieces his adversaries before him and smite them that hate him. You better watch on who you hate and all, man. We're speaking with conviction for a reason. Because the enemy of wickedness works for our creator works for our father's house. He was just late to the meeting. He was just late to the meeting. Let's go, man. Roger, Haraja Chola, Jadara. Raja Haraja Chola Jadaran is the husband of Lady Hannah of Babylon. Babylon is a land of captivity that's right here in America. <laughs> like Egypt, right here in America. Like Atlantis, right here in America. All this would be Babylon. Raja Haraja Chola II Jadaran is Presta John, whose son is David and Hanan. And Saliman. Hanan, also spelled Kanan or Canaan, <laughs> and Anan or Anion. Anan ben David would be the son of David. 
Hanan or Hanan is the son of David, the Preston. They trying to crack the code, man. They trying to crack the code, man. Now, the previous article put it around 15th century. Let's see what this article got to say. You can get it at 432thedrop.com. Roger Haraja Cholo the second Jadaron, right? The first Presta John and Emperor, because you know we ain't talking, we're talking David, so we can't be talking no Christian, right? Emperor of the three Indies. The so called Voynich manuscript is a 15th century copy. Whoa. So they, you know, that's why you got to get multiple sources, right? So they want to say it's a carbon dated <laughs> to the 15th century, 1400s, carbon dated. This, you know, researchers are just saying, nah, it's not carbon dated there. That's where the copy's from. So by the time we're looking at this thing, we're looking at a copy from hundreds of years later. This is why they put their pictures in it. So by the time we see it in the 15th century, Columbus already done popped off. The Doom Diverses is popping off. The hijack is in full hijack mode and they've changed the images. Iconoclasm, right? So, the so-called Voynich manuscript is a 15th century copy of the original, which was written by him, who? The first Prester John, Raja Haraja Chola II Jadaran. Soli, Solima, <laughs> the Pandion, the Chola. We're talking the father of Solomon and Axelar David. So the, dyna the dynasty of these Cholas has to be synonymous with the kings of Israel, Manago. So now you can do your own separate recon into the Panians and the Chola and put the Israelite biblical flow as well as the indigenous American flow as well as the Mongol flow and bring it on home to India Superior. We're talking Raja here, Raja. Talking Preston John. The first Preston John. Emperor, King, Khan of the three Indias. Will one of those include Australia's? It's touching. <laughs> Talking Tarzanta, huh? Holy Land, huh? Okay. We got a preserved, pristine rainforest popping up. The so called Voynich manuscript is a 15th century copy of the original, which was written by him, Prester John, in the 12th century because he's popping off in the 12th century. So all this cat, <laughs> they talking about 15th century and all this cat, they're talking about the writer is unknown. Its author remains a mystery. The purpose remains a mystery. The language remains a mystery. The author remains a mystery. Wow. <laughs> wow. The code cannot be cracked. It's sitting in Yale University. Which one? The copy or the OG? They got their cryptographers trying to crack it. <laughs> Everyone's trying to crack it. And what does it mean for such sphinxes as these obey no one but their master? 
thing. Oh, wow. So he's saying that this is a 12th century, you know, that, that 15th century joint is a copy of the 12th century original. Now check it out. It says the language is Hebreo Georgian. Whoa. Hebrew, Georgian, Indian. <laughs> Can we put this together since we are, you know, uh, popping off? You know, we're not cracking our code. We are uh, breaking their spell, you know. You got to keep the code to break their spell. Talking to my Hebrews. Hey, shout out to my Nagas in Georgia. I, like, I got some, some uh, Georgia clay on the way. My bro, uh, Chef DeVoe, what they do? <laughs> so, Georgia, right? Georgia? Georgia? Georgia on my mind. I think about Georgia when I think about the son of Prester John. Because the son of Prester John is David of Babylon and Georgia. Georgia. We're not talking Georgia and Russia today. We're talking the original Georgian dynasty, which is the dynasty of Preston John, which is the dynasty of the Khan of Khans, which is the kings of Israel, my God, kings of Jerusalem, and the kings of Judah. Georgia. Then we go into Babylonian captivity. Yay or nay? What's it got to do with... Georgia, Georgia. We'll get into the Brack and Tony dynasties again. Like I said, press to 100 is our checkpoint. You know, that just means we got back to one with more ether. You know, we got more ether behind us. You know, we spiraled up. You know, look out for us to continue. The investigation will always continue, but we're going to continue right at home no right at four three two the drop radio it's the fifth way so they're saying the voinic is hebrew georgia georgia david xlr indian man are we just talking india superior put it all together language of the royal house. So this is a language that's been sealed that they can't even decode. It's so encrypted. It's so secret. I guess the royal house needs a secret language. I guess we need a Hebrew, Georgian, <laughs> Indian language, man. I'm just talking about the royals. His son was a black, his son by his black Pandian wife was King Vikarama Pandian. He had at least three sons with by his Jewish wife, Lady Gavaret Hannah. Or well, Jewish, they mean Hebrew. Hana. His son Dawi Soslin became a Babylonian exilarch. 1175. So we're confirming all this history in genie.com. Genealogies, right? So here's David Sauslin. Still digging on the title and what the meaning is behind Sauslin. But we just know we're talking Dawi. We're talking Hebrew priest king. Exilarchs means the leader during these captivities. And the Husband of Queen Tamar. Oh, yeah. I told you every time Tamar keep popping up. I told you. Queen Tamar. <laughs> Just go get the drop, man. <laughs> That's a whole nother series, man. We're talking about our high Amazon queens. Look out for us. His son, Hanan, or Hani, became the prince or king of the Jews. And Tahama and his son, Suleiman, Soli was the Hebrew prince or Khan or king of Telemus 
who married Queen Limbu Labana of Rubani. Okay. We're just talking about it. Mentalfloss.com is talking about it. You know, they're talking about something. No, that's not a cold, they say. <laughs> oh, man. No, that's not a cold. It's possible solution to a cold suggested by Tim Roberts of Australia's Central Queensland University. University. The cipher itself is a few lines of strange circuit or curlicues from a letter that composer Edward Elgar wrote to his friend Dora Penny in the ninth century. So they talk about cracking the code. This back to that crypto. Crypto. This is at the CIA building. So be careful with the crypto. Uh, cryptos at CIA headquarters, my man. Now you got cryptocurrency, right? Right. <laughs> All right. Then they talk about uh, other ciphers have been around for long enough that experts can only rely on historical sources for help. So here we come with all this drop. <laughs> that their historical sources can't even touch. So who's going to be in whose classroom at this point? You know, they can't teach us nothing. They got to rely on historical sources. And that's all we about is sources. So we seem to have changed positions. They've taken it as far as they can take it. And if you think we're alluding to the infamous Voynich manuscript, you are right. <laughs> He's talking to Voynich, man. The most secretive book in history. A bizarre medieval manuscript written in a language no one can read has baffled the world's best cryptologists, stumped the most powerful code breaking computers. <laughs> their computers can't crack it and been written off as a masterful hoax can the hive mind finally unlock its secret the breakthrough when it finally came happened in the most remarkable way Stephen Bax was in his home office late at night it was April 2013 and he spent the previous 10 months poring over reproductions of a 15th century manuscript copy Bursting with bizarre drawings, female figures in green baths, astrological symbols, intricate geometric designs, plants that seem familiar, but also just slightly off, strangest of all. And the reason Bax, a 54-year-old professor of applied linguistics in Belfortshire, England, had become obsessed with the 35,000 words in a manuscript wow. written in an elaborate, beautiful script beautiful script from the royal house of Judah, my knock. The language has never appeared on any other document anywhere, ever. <laughs> At his day job, the University of Belfortshire Central for Research in English, History, Learning and Assessment, Bax focuses on English language learning, decoding ancient manuscripts is not in his purview, but ever since he'd heard about the mysterious book, He'd been fixated on it, scoring the web, talking to scholars, analyzing 14th century herbal manuscripts, because just like we got in the first link that they talk about dragons, they also talk about herbs. And we know it's 12th century herbs. <laughs> and he was fairly confident he had identified a few words in the document. Juniper Cotton and the Constellation Taurus, but before he could go public with his findings, he needed more. So this, so this dude's having a breakthrough because he identified three words, man. He thinks he identified three words. The Voynich Manuscript softbound 240-page volume has baffled crypt 
crypto analysts, linguists, computer scientists, physicists, historians, and academics. So don't say we ain't talking, you know, scholarship around here because we're talking top level ac academics on a manuscript that's in Yale University. Ain't nobody talking more scholarly than this. It don't get no more scholarly than Pastor John Malani. That's like finding Atlantis, you know what I'm saying? Because it's all happening. You unlock all the histories, the Mongol, the biblical, the Hindu, India, the Chinese, everything gets unlocked. The American, that's why they're baffled. No one has deciphered it. No one has deciphered it. And no one knows why it was made. Experts don't know what to make of it. It's a cipher. Kuiper. Kyber. Kieber. Heber. Hevera. Caver. Copper. Is cipher is Kieber. Kiever. We're just talking to code. Long lost language. There's been plenty of speculation, both inside and outside academia, over the past century. The case of the Voining has has been cracked and debunked, cracked and debunked again, and even rather convincingly exposed as a hoax. But the book's acquisition is a mystery. Call anything a hoax, but you don't know what it is. So how can it be a hoax? You can't crack it. How can it be a hoax? Talked a little bit about this Wilford Voynich 1912 situation to skip it down. For a book dealer, it was like stumbling into a treasure. Onto treasure back in London, he dubbed his acquisition the Roger Bacon Cipher. Research Roger Bacon, man. After the 13th century, English monk and scientist and put it up for sale. A letter that came with the book suggested Bacon was the author, rather. Voynich actually believed it, or whether he simply believed that associating this book with Bacon would help him fetch a higher resale price is unclear. I think he's best compared to a used car dealer, says Rene Zinbergen, a space scientist who lives near Darmstadt, Germany, and runs a Voynich manuscript website in, her spare, in his spare time. He was selling secondhand books and making sure that this one would get the best price he could. <laughs> yeah, man. So clearly, there ain't no conclusion. Clearly, they can't even tell you what language this is without bringing it on home to you right in your face, Bob. They try to treat it like Egyptian hieroglyphs, but they can't decipher nothing. <laughs> they don't know. Oh, nothing major happens in the long saga of the Voynich without media hope. The last time it had happened in 2004, a British computer scientist named Gord Rugg had published a paper showing that the whole thing might be an elaborate hoax created expressly to separate a wealthy buyer from a lot of money. And we're and where this media controversy, there's a contention among Voynich obsessive. So this hoax cannot be decoded. This hoax is being compared to Hebrew, Georgian. <laughs> it's bringing in the Georgian dynasty and the Raja Raja Chola dynasty. It's bringing in the Indian <laughs> kingdoms, the royal families of India Superior. And it's a hoax. But they can't crack it to this day. To this day, my nigga. Yeah. Okay. Other theories put forth that the secrets locked inside the Voynix vellum pages could reveal a coming apocalypse or a revelation or merely the details of medieval hygiene. <laughs> Some think 
The script could be observations of a traveler who was trying to learn a language like Arabic or Chinese or a stream of consciousness recording of someone in a trance. Like, man, stop it, man. The most bizarre theories involve aliens or a long lost underground race of lizard people. Oh, like dragons? You saying this might be a dragon language? Okay, well, let's, let's keep reading about it. Y'all think this is some type of dragon talk? You know, you see a few pages here. What is it saying, man? What y'all think? <laughs> we gonna meditate on it. Can statistics help crack the mysterious Voynich Manuscript? This is from noblemagazine.org. The 15th century Voynich Manuscript has puzzled scholars and confounded attempts to decipher it for centuries. It's 200 odd pages contain dozens and colorful illustrations of plants, astrological diagrams, naked female figures bathing in elaborate plum. That's all they're looking at is naked women all over the place. Man. <laughs> and you're going to see how these uh, 15th century, um, you know, copiers have copied their images on everything. So it's just just white women everywhere. Just everything's white women everywhere. <laughs> just a bunch of white women going crazy, right? So just just imagine the original manuscript and know that we don't get to see the OG. Stranger still, the manuscript is not written in any known script and language. If it's written in code, no one has cracked it, though many have tried. And I'm leaving these links for you so you can just at least see that from everywhere across the world, they're all trying to crack it. We know that the manuscript was in Prague in the early 1600s, and from there it went to the library of the Jesuit scholar Anthanasius Kircher, and presumably stayed there until it ended up in the Jesuit archives outside Rome, where Wilfred Vonick found it in 1911 or 12. They just stumbled on this stuff. Just stumbled wow. on it. In the 20th century, they just found out about it. The old Voynich. Old Voynich. Okay. Yeah. No one knows, you know, so we see a bunch of theories. Here's a, a closer view of the language that they're calling Hebraeo. Indian, what they say. Wow, the language is a Hebrew, Georgian, Indian language of the royal house. You see Hebrew, Georgian, Indian, man. <laughs> Should we read it from right to left, left to right? I mean, you know. One possible analogy is the technical terminology in academia as a linguist. I have a huge number of technical terms I use with other linguists, and they're not exactly meant to keep people out, but they're a shorthand way of talking with other linguists and a marker that I'm part of the end group of knowledgeable individuals so maybe we should think about this not so much as hiding information from others but more of a kind of end joke or preservation of knowledge for people who knew that particular language of writing well yeah clearly thanks hijack city it is a preservation of knowledge that's why it's encrypted <laughs> come on man voinikis they're just gonna call it voinikis <laughs> uh, what are they gonna compare it to the tenderoni now? This is getting this is getting crazy, man. I'm out of here, man. <laughs> Wall Street Journal's talking about it. So I don't leave all these links, you know, we're gonna keep it going, but I'm just reintroducing the Voynich. You know, we're gonna start really meditating on it and seeing what we can crack 
You know what I'm saying? From, you know, what we can see. He pointed to an ubiquitous power tied to the global information economy and illustrated his point in part with fragments from late medieval codex known as the Voynich Manuscript. Doing so helped the documentation documentarian to set a mood of mystery. But what did it really show? For more than a century, the Voynich Manuscript has been a subject of fevered speculation and totalizing visions. Like Curtis's, the text was written in either a code that has not yet been cracked or a natural language in cipher that haven't yet been identified. But for the fact that none of the plant species has so far been identified. Remember what Robert Knox said, everything over here is not identical to what's over there. But they still want to put it in the 15th century. From explorersweb.com, probably the godfather of all, of all puzzles, the Voidic manuscript remains nowhere close to a solution. <laughs> they can't get close to a solution. This odd text owes its name to William Voidic, a Polish antiquarian who owned a rare book business in the early mid 20th century. All right, man, we got all that. So, you know, hey, everyone's talking about it. I'm just showing you different pictures of it. This is what we need to meditate on. You know, maybe we can see something or, you know, maybe it's going to unlock something and not. Maybe it's some deep down, you know, understanding that maybe your head bone can't connect to right away, but maybe some part of you remembers, you know, maybe some part of us remembers what Preston John is really saying. Preston John, Khan of the Three Indias, the original in the 12th century was written by the Preston. The Washington Post is talking about it. <laughs> Everyone's talking about it. <laughs> All these elaborate inscriptions. I mean, you know, they can't crack it. Se secrecy, power. In a vault in the basement of a library in Connecticut lies a book no one could read. Talking Yale University, man. The Voidic Manuscript, an early 15th century codex copy that belongs in Yale University, he presents an irresistible medieval mystery. Who's in it for the mystery? So, look, man, you see it, man. You know, you can read more into it. Everyone. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go with their images. So these are the type of images you're going to see in the 15th century copy. You're going to see a bunch of, you know, naked white people, man. <laughs> Bathing in the fountain, huh? Are they in a fountain of you? Strange quest to crack the Voynich manuscripts going on on undark.org. It's approximately 600 year old mystery. That contains that continues to stump scholars, cryptographers, physicists, computer science. All right, man, you know, so they keep talking about these naked ladies, man. <laughs> Some Voynich hunters believe the search can be pure poison for a fledgingly scholarly career because when studying the manuscript, there's always an easy opinion to make a ridiculous mistake. All right. Thus far, however, every claim of a Voynich solution, including both of last year's, has been either ignored or debunked by another expert media outlet and Voynich obsessives in, Chess in Cheshire's case, the University of Bristol retracted a press release highlighting his paper after other experts roundly challenged his research. The academic world is a jungle. 
Yeah, it's a jungle out here. Sometimes I wonder how they keep from going under. And, you know, last one we'll get in terms of articles for you to dig on is from WSHU.org. Off the path, we visited the Vornick manuscript. Here go them ladies again. <laughs> you see these other depictions around here. What do you think this looked like in the original copy? What do you think the original copy had? And I still don't see no dragons. But they said that the illustrated handwritten codex is believed to be of Italian origin. Come on, man. <laughs> its author language purpose remains a mystery. Illustrations inside include fictitious plants, fauna, dragons, castles, and astrolog astrological symbols. What do you think the OG look like? I mean, they 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 really want to know before they even they know it's something good because they already put their images in. And she said, "Oh, I see a bunch of my people all over this ancient age manuscript." She's so proud. You see surreal landscapes, and then there's a section of new ladies. Oh, here we go. Even everybody loves the new ladies and their interesting Dr. Susical contraptions and baths. Come on, man. Zayet speculates the book may be written by a woman. Hey, the female forms are just a little too distinct and naturalistic. Honestly, upper class women in the time, not a lot to do all day. She said, I can see creating and creating and writing down. Come on, wow. man. Down the rabbit hole. The odd little book was passed around privately for centuries. Its journeys from hand to hand was nearly as strange as its contents. At one point, it was passed from an alchemist to a Jesuit priest. Some believe it had mystical powers. Uh-oh. So we went from the Simon Necromicon to the Voynich encrypted Hebreo Georgian Indian language uh magic book <laughs> mystical powerful book they're trying to crack the code yeah all right hey coming to drive a library <laughs> get up get up on all the drop this is the og library right here click the link below surfed away with a night you know we then we got the void again here actually we do because i just pulled it up out of here you know but come in here and just wave surf and all these are uh in the current library you know a lot of a lot of monogas still like the look of the OG, so we keep them we keep them both in circulation. You know, anything happens to one, we got we got another link full of drop, man. That's just how it is. We got the Voidic manuscript up in it, and this is probably the one we're gonna use to <laughs> belly flop and have our belly flop fundraisers, man. <laughs> really uh surfed away, you know, Yale University, my night. With that fire burning and that water flow. Can y'all decipher it? Can my wave surface decipher the Vonic manuscript, man? <laughs> but not in the back of the class say, yep, I got it drop, but I ain't gonna tell nobody. <laughs> hey, shout out to you, my not in the back of the class. Hey, keep it to yourself, my Naga, because we might not be ready for it, man. 
what language is this? My nah, you can't. Can you decipher it though? Can you decipher it though? I'm going quickly, but you could pause the video at any time and you can, you know, they got technology. You could take screenshots. You could study this, you know what I'm saying? Or you can go to the drop library, you know, at 432 to drop or click the link below and pull up the morning manuscript yourself, man, and just fall back to it, man, you know. I'm looking for some dragons now since homie mentioned some dragons, you know, just. I'm just gonna kind of go quick, but let me know when you see. If you see a dragon, let me know when you saw the dragon, because I, I haven't seen the dragon yet, man. What are some interesting plants? Some little carnivores, too. Wow. We may got to start from right to left on this book, man, you know. Break they spell, man. Let's see what it is, man. Surf the wave. What is this, man, you know? Can y'all, you know, decipher the drop? I believe in my nights, man. I believe we can do what they can't do. You know, but it's going to take some, it's going to take some real meditation, man. What does it mean? Look like some type of map. Cardinal points. Uh, you know, you tell me. What does it mean, my night? Let me know if y'all see some dragons. Look how they put their pictures on all this stuff. Man, it's ridiculous. So this whole book's about a bunch of so-called Caucasians. <laughs> Come on, man. In the 12th century. They were just so literate. They were writing encrypted books, weren't they? Because they had so much literature. So much culture. These naked old ladies. <laughs> man, what did this book used to really look like, man? I, I, I could see they hijacked the crap out of this. Look at this. Man. Look at this, man. Don't worry about the images, you know, just focus on the meaning. You know, dodge your own high chair. I'm looking for the dragons, man.
We're going to take our time with it, don't you? We're going to take our time with it. But you think they would take the dragons out? Because that would just turn it up around here. If they had a bunch of dragons. I mean, they said we got, they said we had dragons, right? We read it together. So something tell me, man, we ain't getting the whole manuscript, man. Wow, wow. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's a lot of writing that they can't encrypt, but they get three words and it's a big special announcement they got. We're just talking about the Voining manuscript. Times of Malta. The Voynich Manuscript has been dug the most mysterious manuscript in the world. And who's the most mysterious Naga in the world? Oh, we're just talking about Preston John. So-called Voynich Manuscript is a 15th century copy of the original, which was written by him in the 12th century. Just talking about Preston John. Father of David Salsler. Of Babylon and Georgia. Hebrew, Hebreo, <laughs> Georgian, Indian, language of the royal house, my naga. We are all talking the same Khan David. Son of David, Salima. Soli Ma, Prestige. From VoynichLanguage.com. Now, you know, they're just giving their take on it. Um, purposes of the Voynich manuscript. Various hypotheses have been put forward as to why and for what purpose the Voynich manuscript was created. To some extent, this is made more, more difficult by the absence of other texts using the same script, of course, and a lack of other context. Where it actually originated and who was involved in this creation. And, you know, they jump around in their theories and say, look, man, <clears throat> it appears to have been created as a single document rather than a gathering together of separate documents okay given the language or the length and arrangement of the text and images and the relatively few corrections there would have had to be some draft or layout or versions and practice text but these have not survived been made despite having had to exist in some numbers. So here's their conclusion. Hey, the Voyage manuscript is either a hoax. So which one is it? Is it a hoax? Possibly of the time the vellum was made, first part of 15th century, a more recent construct. However, analysis has shown that the text probably dates to the time of the vellum, V-E-L-L-U-M. All right, what's another theory? It uses a constructed language, cipher or codes, steganography, steganography, or it is an exotic natural language or hybrid language. Keep going. It is a form of outsider art, gloss, glossolalia. All right. The cost argument might well be an argument against this. Keep going. It is a display object. <laughs> For what purposes, whether by a charlatan or another person, keep going. It is linked to events and views at the time of its creation in the 15th century. Example, a purported document from Prester John. So this drop is not the only one connecting the Voynich manuscript with Prester John. Got it. Voniglanguage.com is also giving a purported possibility 
<laughs> of this document being linked to Prester John or a similar figure. It belongs to an obscure, otherwise unknown group who have not left any other traces, given that it is written in a practice hand. It would be surprising that there are no other documents. So they're, they're looking at it and like, yo, clearly this language is in use. It's perfectly written in some language. This is not a practice document. So there has to be other documents with the same language, but they found zero, which makes this an anomaly. There are no other documents. The person involved would have to operate in the ordinary world and have left other traces, unless we're talking about, you know, different levels, different dimensions, right? <laughs> different frequencies. Something to do with extraterrestrials. When we're talking about extra terror, extra terror, terror fuego, <laughs> terror, Tara Sancta, let's go. We're talking about extra terror. Extraterrestrial, God. and similar probabilities, possibilities which are presented presently considered of low probability. Gotcha, gotcha. So you know nothing about Preston Chuck. You know. <laughs> we rarely even look at Wikipedia, <laughs> uh, you know, as far as uh, their outlay on Preston John, but you know, it's kind of fun to surf the wave on what. Wikipedia has to say about Preston wow. John. And, you know, if you're brand new to it, you know, it's a good way to start because they're going to bring you pretty much through the Christianized version of this patriarch. We're digging on the Roger Hiraja Joel, and they still trying to put this Christian stuff. Then we talk about Nestorians, and we got to read kind of what is a Nestorian because it's going to come up, right? Nestorian. Old king, renowned for wise counsel. You got to help him out sometimes. Nestor, Nestori. Jack City. You're going to bring us way over here and not have nothing of a definition. See, look, this is why we PDF our documents, man. Because you ain't giving us nothing, boss. Nothing, boss. King of Philosophers. You're going to leave us right there, boss. This is, this is pathetic, man. <laughs> Let's look at this one here. Man. See if anyone is still giving proper definitions of what a nester is. Let's see, Webster's just popping off. Hi, Jack City. And I know uh, if I go in there and then uh, press the packs, Aqua Tracy Lake gonna have it, a PDF somewhere in there, man. <laughs> Cause they used to have it on that first link we clicked. Nah, not the wiki. 
used to be right here on this lake. And now they playing. This just proves that they're literally changing all these links in real time. They said it right there, old K, renowned for wise counsel. And now they took it to out of these some of us, some of us, man. Hijack City. Nestor, wise old counselor. Oh, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. A genius of Paris with gray heads, man. What? Oh, we got him out the Douglas Harper's etymology dictionary. Nestor. See how they try to hide it, man. We had to work for this. Old king renowned for wise counsel. I, I gotta bookmark this. I, you know, we, we gotta PDF this one before they change this one too. You know what I mean? Okay, so now we know what an historian is, Nestor. Old king renowned for wise counsel. Let's go. Let's go. So when they start talking about Preston John and calling him an historian patriarch, we know that they are referring to an old king renowned for wise counsel, renowned for mama, one who blesses Baruch, Baruch. It's all about being Baruch. It's all about being an ancient Khan, an ancient wise Khan, like, uh, like Salimah. Like the Emperor of Soli, like the Preston. The Preston is a Nestor because <laughs> he's an old king renowned for his wisdom. Mama rocks with David, right? Khan. Khan, Khan. You know, you can recon all of this because, you know, this, they're going to go into the letter of Preston John. They're going to you know, take you through, you know, all of this uh, 12th century business, right? We're talking about the Voynich reports of visits of the Archbishop of India to Constantinople and Patriarch of India to Rome at the time of Pope Calixtus. So they're going to take you through all this church history. After where Preston John set out for Jerusalem to rescue the Holy Land, right? Then they got his holiness, uh, his fabulous wealth was demonstrated by his emerald scepter. So he got a scepter. His holiness by his descent from the three magi, right? Now we're bringing him back to the three magi. And we were just talking about that uh, Belteshar last time. So watch how this ties back to Prester 98. Go get it. Robert Silverberg connects him. Connects. The accounts with historical events of 1141 with the Kara Katai, right? Spelled with the Q or the K. Kara, like the Karam Kahawa under Yellow Dashi. So we didn't connect this Yellow Dashi before. There is no reason to suppose Yellow Dashi was ever called Prester John, but Prester never called himself Prester. <laughs> You got the letter of Preston John 1165 popping off, going out to all these kings. Pope Alexander III sent a letter to Preston John. You know, you're talking about a Naga Khan because they keep trying to connect him with Ethiopia or Abyssinia. Then it'll connect you through the Mongol Empire. I told you all these histories are coming together. <laughs> the Hebrew flow, you know, all their orthodoxy into the Mongol flow. Managa. Marco Polo is talking about the Preston. <laughs> Franciscan voyager Orderic de Pordignoni stripped Preston John of much of his other worldly veneer, portraying him as a more realistic earthly monarch. Everyone's talking about the Preston. 
Joinville describes Genghis Khan and his chronicle as a wise man who unites all Tartar tribes and leads them to victory against their strongest enemy, Prester John. So now all the hijacks make a confederacy Khan, to, to attack the Khan and steal the Khan to take the title Prester. William of Rubric says a certain Vut, V-U-T, Lord of the Karyats and brother to the Nestorian King John. Nestorian, old king renowned for wise counsel. Khan. Nestorian King John was wow. <laughs> a was defeated by the Mongols under Genghis Khan. So if Genghis Khan is real, Prester John is also very real. And he's the one that popped the whole crusades off. He's the one that they were looking for, the kingdom of Prester John. And that's when they found you, my naga. Descendants of Prester John. Yeah. Marco Polo talking about the war between Prester and Genghis Khan. Khan. Started when Genghis Khan, new ruler of the rebellious Tartars, asked for the hand of Prester John's daughter in marriage. <laughs> he said, you rebelling against me and you want my daughter, man, you must be out of your damn mind. Angered that this lowly vessel would make such a request. Prester John denied him in no uncertain terms in the war that followed Genghis Khan triumph. And Prester John perished. Or maybe Genghis Khan kidnapped Prester John's bond, Daniel Kilia. Remember, he wanted these unblemished Nagas. <laughs> Remember the book of Daniel? I told you we're going to start marching our way back through Daniel, man. With a dragon flit eye perspective. Yeah, in the year of Joel King, King of Judah. Joel King, King of Judah. Came Nebuchadnezzar, which means Nebo, defend my boundaries. And some would say, defend the king because of that. Czar, defend the kingdom, defend the boundaries of the kingdom. King of Babylon, or could this be Genghis Khan? Typologies. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, to his hand and part of the vessels of the house of Hawa and carried it into the land of Shinar. Remember that? to the house of his God and the vessels he brought into the treasure house of his God. And the king spoke unto Ashpenaz, Penaz, his chief officer, that he should bring in certain of the children of Israel and the seed royal and the nobles. So he brought the royal seed, which is Daniel, which is David's son, Kilian. Yeah, kill it, man. They don't mind us while we try to, you know, connect some things. Kill it is Daniel, son of King David of Israel and Abigail. And we got the story that Abigail was a widow and they didn't know at first if Daniel was the son of David or her previous husband. So Hawa made Daniel as the perfection of David. He's his name. Kiliad means perfection of the father, perfection of the father. So Daniel was chosen. He was also listed as one of the four sinless men of the ancient Israelites. That means he had no transgression. And then he won a royal sea, one who was no blemish, fair to look on, 
handsome Naga, right? Skillful in all wisdom, Nestorian. <laughs> Skillful in knowledge, discerning in thought, and such had ability to stand in the king's palace. We're talking the royals, the seed royale. Con. Genghis Khan, <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar, Nebo, defend my boundaries. Might have only triumphed because he had Daniel as a bargaining chip. Maybe that made the press to step down so Daniel could rise because it was time. Yeah, you go from the Mongol into Ethiopia, Abyssinia. Now you're in the three Indias, right? Follow the story. You're an India superior, Khan. Huh? Recon Lebna Dangle Dawit. The whole David flow, all connected with his emperor, Zara Yaakob. That's the Ethiopian history, which is the American history. Then you get into the Marvel and the DC comics, and they all got this Prester John, a Masonic protector, Messianic, a Mashiach of the Holy Grail. They got it in their novels, War in Heaven, Prester John and his kingdom also figure prominently in Umberto Eco's 2000 novel, Baldolino, B A U D O L I A O. I mean, science fiction, Marvel. What character is everywhere like this? This is the greatest investigation in the history of investigations. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because the Voynich is within this. And if the Voynich is still not being uh, deciphered, the secret cipher cannot be cracked, then that means you can't be cracked. This is the greatest investigation of all time. And we know we got a lot of people in our classroom, a lot of people taking this information, turning it into something that benefits themselves, that benefits their tribe. But everybody know <laughs> where the spiral is, where the heart bone is, of the press to John Recon, and we give all praise to Hawa, the tribe nation has been so thorough all these years. Various attributed arms have been given to Preston John, the native of Canterbury Cathedral, which is adorned with heraldic bosses, represents Preston John with Azor, Azore, the savior on the cross. So the no matter how they flipping it, they're letting you know this is a Mashiach. <laughs> and they even represent it as a savior on a cross, man. So where did Jesus come from? Where did John the Baptist come from? We're talking John, Preston John. We're talking fountain of youth. Can't talk Preston without talking to fountain. The king across the mountains. <laughs> and now he's on a cross? I guess so, because we got to put the two cross sticks back together. But look, they're just talking a towel, though. <laughs> the last letter in the Hebrew is the towel, the two cross sticks. That's your OG cross. 16th century cartographer Abraham Ortilius produced a speculative map of Preston John's empire in Africa featuring a lion rampant facing to the sinister holding in its paws a quasi towel cross of full height. So when they say Preston John had all these crosses, they're talking about he carried the towel. He carried the towel. And if they're looking for this Naga in Africa, you know we're talking to Naga. Halawa. There ain't no speculation of what this Naga is looking like. If they're, if they're searching in Africa, you know we're talking to Naga. 
So that's all good. It's just verifying who got the towel. So whether you're looking in Africa, Ethiopia, or the Mongol, Asia Minor, or we're talking Asia Major, the letter that's going out to everybody, we're just talking to Preston. Allah, wow. He said he got the founder youth. We still got to dig even deeper on this magical, mythical founder of youth, man. You know? <laughs> You, you you Wikipedia found a youth, they're going to take you right back to Preston John. That's how important this con is to the water. Magical waters. Looks a lot like uh, that Voynich, though. <laughs> Appearing in the writings of Herodotus and the Alexander Romance and in the stories of Preston John. Bang, right there in the beginning, you connect to the water. You can't front on Preston because you can't front on King David. Controlling the Nile River, right? All right. Some kind of funny, man. Back to this heraldry. They say. Represents Preston John with Azore, the savior on a cross or. Well, I said, or what? So I just clicked on or, and it takes you to heraldry and heraldry, French for gold. Is the tincture of gold. An or is French for gold. So they're saying the savior on the golden cross, man. And by cross, they mean a towel cross specifically. That's when X marks the spot. Or is French for gold. Come. So when they be ore mining, <laughs> you already know though. They're looking for the minerals, right? French for gold. They still are gold mining in the guise of ore mining. I think we see it clearly. I think we see it clearly. And I know we've been talking about Louisiana. Shout out to my Louisiana noggin surfing away. We've been talking about that Algier. And uh, yeah, I mean, just more confirmation only in your state.com. Most people have no idea there's an underwater ghost town hiding in Louisiana. Many people in Louisiana live under the threat of floodwaters for one reason or another. There's basically no one in the state that doesn't have some reason to be concerned about the environmental changes that have put our state at risk. That's why it's so important to look back at our history. Yeah. Uh huh. There used to be a community in Point Coop Parish that no longer exists. Currently, is partly covered by Route 190 roadway. They covered it up with a road and four stations. <laughs> Elliott City, man, used to be right at that spot. Subject to flooding, yeah, right. They they flooded us out, man. More Naga cities, man. And it wasn't until more Ganza Spillway was built in 1939 that residents were forced to leave. Uh, we're just talking about the damn dams that's flooding out residents. Now there is nothing left of Elliott City except people's memories. Wow. Right around here. And what else, man? What else, man? <laughs> so recently they found, archaeologists found an ancient city off the coast of St. Bernard. They said it was built 12,000 years ago. 
Now it's over there connected with the chandelier, you know, islands and all that. I'll leave the drive for you, but get the drive. We also dropped it on IG. Shout out to the fan that dropped it. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, you know, the ruins of an ancient civilization. Large underwater granite mounds. They want to connect it with Egypt and say it's connected with this, uh, you know, Egyptian flow. Archaeologist or architect George Gale believes the site now underwater was a, once a major city predating the Maya, Inca, Aztec civilizations in Mexico and in Central and South America. This city predates all that in Louisiana. He named it Crescentis. <laughs> What's down there are hundreds of buildings, man. Hundreds of buildings down there in Louisiana water that are covered with sand and silt and that are geographically related to the Great Pyramid of Giza. Whoa, what would that have to do with Louisiana and the Gulf of Mexico? Hmm. Grand is not native, they say, to Louisiana or Mississippi. So somebody must be floating stones, a billion stones down the Mississippi or the Nile River. And what does Crescentus mean? Why would you call this place Crescentus? Kind of sounds like Atlantis. What, what does Crescentus mean? <laughs> Oh, Crescentus, right? Coming to be, becoming visible, springing from, arising, arising, coming forth, my dog. Sound like the, you know, breakdown of the name Hawa, to exist, to be, to become, right? Wow, sound like the Nagas that's becoming visible again, coming to be, springing from, arising. We're just talking cool, like Daniel Al Cool. Increasing, rising, growing, thriving, multiplying, augmenting their reality. That's Chris Sentis. To spring from, arise, come forth, grow, thrive, multiply. Yeah, that's Crescentus. So for some reason, they're naming this city after something that's rising and coming forth and being revealed, you know? <laughs> They also speak on it at the ancientorigin.net website. Back to this connection with the Great Pyramids of Giza, man. So 12,000-year-old lost city off New Orleans coast. Rising. I mean, rising. But my naga, you know. <laughs> hey, we, we just talking Tara Zonkta. <laughs> Australia's. Let's keep going, man. Shout out to this author, uh, Chavez L. Bay. You know, I definitely bought the book and uh, dropped a little on it on the IG. And, you know, hey, like I said, we, we've been digging for a long time. And, you know, different people going to collect the information. And this is one of the authors that collected a lot of information along with their own recon and kind of made it their own flow <laughs> you know what i'm saying but um as long as you know you know the fire continues to burn in the nagas that this recon is being um revealed through so you can't erase the naga out you know what i'm saying because the fire is going to keep burning you know what i'm saying and not that this author's trying to do that, but, you know. <laughs> hey, buy the book. I bought the book. You know, I noticed right away that it was swerving a lot in the recon that we've been digging on. I haven't written, you know, 
our book on behalf of Drive Nation yet, but it's coming. But like I said, by the time I write my book, I'm going to have to cite a bunch of authors that, you know, were in our classroom, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, which is crazy. But I'm just glad the information is getting out there. And, uh, you know, love to the bro. You know, he definitely gave some acknowledgments. <laughs> Shout out to my bro, Kira Mayo. He said, yeah, he, 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 he shows who, who he's been, uh, you know, watching and he acknowledged, you know, who he's been watching. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, Drop Nation wasn't in this acknowledgement, man. But Ahab Cudi Mayo, he, he definitely shouted Cudi Mayo out. He shouted Dan Calloway and all that. So he didn't shout out Drop Nation, you know what I mean? But it's all good because I know he, he he slides it in there. He, he lets you know on the slender. But like I'm saying, this ain't no ego thing. It's about respect. You know, to kick a bunch of information and, you know what I'm saying, not, you know, act like you just popping off, you know what I'm saying, when there's a whole investigation popping off well before you start popping off anything near this, bringing all this together. A whole tribe's been bringing this out. So you, you might want to give that tribe ultimate AHOB and respect. AHOB to the bro, like I said, Cootie Mayo, Dane, and everybody else, you know what I'm saying, that. He's letting us know he's watching the videos. He's, 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 you know, surfing away and, and, you know, it's all good, you know, but if they were just kicking it with the right perspective from the cold perspective, that's one thing when they do it and, you know, link everything back to Islam. Oh, everyone knows Moabites and Moors are under Islam. Since Ruth and the Moabites of the Bible was the grandmother of the biblical King David, they all must be under Islam, right? See that type of stuff right here? You can't hijack the information and bring it back to Islam and start kicking this stuff like king of the Islamic Jews or Hebrews. Preston John is the king of the Islamic Jews. But you got all this drop, but you ain't paying attention to who the presser is up against the whole time. All the sultans that's being brought down because of this King David, the Hebrew priest king that's fighting all hijacks, Christian and Muslim. You just made this dude a Muslim. You just made him a Moor. You just made him a Moabite. You made him an Islamic Jew. See, that's disrespectful. That's why I'm popping off. It's not about, oh, you're using my information, but you're using the information, all these links that we provide, all this, you know what I'm saying, drop that we provided, and then you bringing it to this? That's very snakeish. It's, it's very serpentish, man, but we're just talking <sighs> the same old ones. But it's all right because you know we can we can dodge our own hijacks. What are you saying over here, man? <laughs> I haven't read the book yet. Uh, got a lot of our drop. You give us no acknowledgement, <laughs> but uh, you bring this back to Islam. But let's uh, dodge our hijacks. Let's see what's up. 1218, the Mongols under Genghis Khan overthrew the Karkatai Empire, which was, which had in about 1211 passed under the control of the adventure of the name and tribe of Mongols. So all this is coming from these same links that we've been dropping, but let's go. In 1220, Genghis Khan, Genghis Khan had gone on to destroy the empire of Khwarezm, a powerful Islamic state, which had been founded towards the end of the 12th century and the land towards the river Oxus and Jakshortes, and which extended in its influence over much of Persia. The Karyat leader may have been Taguru Khan, Prestijan, the man who was Genghis Khan's childhood protector after his father died. Whoever it was, most of the Karyats were known to have converted from Islam to Nestorianism. Yeah, okay. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we about to get it. Because it's all coming clear. Sometimes you really just got to take your time and just let it all come out, man. Because we just talked about the old king renowned for wisdom, right? Nestor in the year 1009. And Genghis' son did take Nestorian wives from the Karyas. So whenever they're talking to Nestorians, substitute that with Hebrew code keepers. Whoever it was, most of the Karyas were known to have converted from what they're calling Islam, because Islam was recently born after the fall of Israel. They're talking the Mohammedan paganism, not no religion called Islam. No, <laughs> not in 1009. <laughs> Let's go. Have converted from Islam to Nestorianism in the year 1009. Genghis' sons did take Nestorian wives from the car. So in other words, someone started keeping a code. Genghis' sons were taking these royal seeds of Judah, these code keepers, these Israelites, seeds of Jacob, wives from the Karyats, Karakatai, one of whom would become the mother of Kublai. So Kublai's mother was a Hebrew Khan of the house of Israel, my life. They're converting through the mothers. They're taking the mamas, the daughters, the sisters, and using them to form a royal bloodline. All of Marco Polo's, Polo's mention of Prester John come from the stories that were set before Polo himself was born. However, Polo did talk to some of the Khans or kings of Asia who were direct descendants of Prester John. Therefore, I consider Polo to be an authority on this matter. Prester John does seem to be a character with supernatural powers, you can refer to Preston's five magical stones and his realm of infinite thousands of dragons. And I say, look, man, I know nobody was <laughs> digging on these uh, five magical stones and realm of infinite thousands of dragons. What, what link is this? <laughs> you know, and I click the link. And we get this hijack city. <laughs> nah, man. Bang, and now we're Alahua. <laughs> so it's clear that the author of this blog and book is in the classroom. I mean, I'm glad you at least linked it. You know what I'm saying? If you didn't at least link it, I would have really gone, gone crazy. But you didn't even you didn't even acknowledge us in your book, bro. <laughs> how would the people know where to get the water from? How would they know how to get back to the water unless you don't you don't want them to find it? You don't want them to find this water. You know what I mean? I'm thinking about the people, not myself. I'm thinking about the people getting the water, not just out of your book, but you're swerving into Islam. Before you start calling it king of Islamic Jews, they should be able to surf the way with 100 Preston Johns. I'm glad you linked it here in your blog, man, but you didn't acknowledge it in your book. You didn't source the material in your book. Man, if I missed it, man, excuse me, show me, man. But, you know, all, all praise the water and the water to drop nation and everybody that you acknowledge with this Preston John investigation flow in this water and this mem sauce did not originate in any other classroom but right here in drop nation so you should lead them back to the water so they can get the drop that's all we say peace to all other classrooms but you already know what it is he descends from the magi king balthazar now we were just talking balthazar weren't we I love, man. And we'll take a break, but I'm going to leave the link and we'll be back in this because I think he actually, you know, connects, you know, maybe some great things that, you know, we can build on as well, man. But, you know, Preston John Legend and Sources, you know, who uh, first 
presented this book? Chef Condi. <laughs> Chef Condi recommended this book. And Aqua Ty is the one that found this thing and did the PDF and all that. So our Aquas presented this book to Drop Nation. But you don't even mention Drop Nation in your acknowledgments. So you're not even mentioning the Aquas that put the recon in. You just acting like you just popping off with Preston John legend and sources, man. This is a farce, man. It's disrespectful. You want to be known as a master researcher? Be known for your recon. But don't be in someone else's classroom and then pop off like it's your classroom. That's disrespectful. But I guess it's just the Moorish way. Because you don't want them to connect to Khan David. You want them to connect to Islam. What's your intentions behind this, man? I'm just popping off for the Aquas that are doing the recon. Press of John Legend and sources the two armies met on the field of Tangu. This is what we'll be digging on. <laughs> of course, we're talking about the Shishir, the Almex. Come on, man. <laughs> if you want to show your original recon, you got to show your process. When you watch Preston John 1 through 99 on the road to 100, you see the process of us finding bit by bit, piece by piece. Ain't nobody just popping off with all this. This is a process, man. So you got to make sure you acknowledge that. Acknowledge the process and acknowledge the tribe that's been getting it in, our ox and our aquas, or it's disrespectful to us. And stop trying to bring us to some Islam, like Islamic king. So Islam was against Islam this whole time. Stop it, man. The king of Judah is not Islamic. That's blasphemy. That's a false witness. You ain't no cold keeper. False witnessing on David ain't no cold keeper. That's why we hot, man. Write your books. Be in the classroom. Take the information. Spread the information. But don't do it with a swerving and don't do it with no serpent intentions. Tangu was in North America. Yeah, because we brought the map out. <laughs> well, I'm going to take this real slow, man. Because <laughs> we got to. We still got that? Uh, oh, yeah, we do. India Superior. How long have you been seeing this map? How long have we been pointing at Tangu? How long have we been reading, you know what I'm saying, the um, the swords uh, swords from the east, talking about Tangu, Preston John and Genghis Khan War, right here in North America? But you see all the source work we drop. You see all the maps we drop, the links we drop, and all the drop that we drop for free so you can follow the lead and get that water. No one is just popping up out of nowhere talking about Tango in North America. But it's just the way, right? It's just the way it goes. I'm just saying, man, acknowledge the water so the Nagas can get the real water. Don't take the water, spin the water, and act like you got the water. Y'all been hijacking everything, man. <laughs> man. I'm just talking about the bro Chavez Elbe. You know where we're coming from. Because if I was in your classroom and you saw all this recon you've been getting and putting in with your whole team for six plus years in your in my book, out of your classroom, and I give you no acknowledgement in your book, <laughs> what would you say? Where did the water come from? Where did Hawa spring the water out of? Islam, or well, these Nagas right here in real time, dropping that drop. Tangu is in North America, according to the three old world maps in the early 1500s, which we just looked at. Tamujin took the title of Genghis Khan and the title of David. 
<laughs> who does this sound like? After he defeated Preston John and by taking one of Preston John's daughters so that he could marry in the line of David, making him and his offspring legitimate kings of the Hebrews. No, because you're marrying it through our mothers and sisters. That don't make you legitimate kings. Legitimate means you are the seed. You are the noon. The air is the seed. You hijacks think you could just steal our women and become the king of the Hebrews? Genghis? Genghis Khan? Negative, man. Negative, man. Even though the link does not mention the Mayas, I believe that the Mayas were also wiped out during the Genghis Khan invasion because no one knows what happened to the Almecs and Mayas. All Almecs and Mayas that were not destroyed had to have migrated to other parts of the Americas to become the so-called Blacks or African Americans of today. This makes sense because we wouldn't fight and die defending their land and the king of the world and the king of Judah. <laughs> Who wouldn't fight and die defending their land and the king of the world and the king of Judah, they came pressing child. Now he's the king of Judah. You'd say he's the Islamic king. Man, almost sound like verbatim in many of these spots. <laughs> I feel like I'm just reading my own thoughts half the time. But this person make it seem like it's their own thoughts, their own process. They just thinking about, well, you know, this doesn't really seem to be <laughs> like you're just having an original thought, man. It's all good. Because we on our Wong Kong, man. Wow. <laughs> Allow, uh, we on a wall call right now. We just popping up. They talking Beltazar. Let's talk Beltazar then. Let's talk Beltazar. We'll be back <laughs> into our recon. Because I was just digging on the Kofar all to rock. You know what I'm saying? I'm just rocking with the Kofar, you know, still digging on that Dijon flow. Wow. Yeah. Four Islamic Turkish dynasties. You see this, man? Preston John is the ruler over four Islamic Turkish dynasties. At first, before these dynasties converted to Nestorians or Hebrews. In other words, Preston was making them convert to us to be in league with their king, Preston John. The Western Shi, the Almegs, the Kara Kanad Kane, the Kara Katai, which is Cathay, which is Katan, as in Joktan, and the Kofar Alta Rock. Since Wolfram van Etchenbach tied the history of Preston John to the Holy Grail legend in his poem Parsifal, talking the romances in which the Preston is the son of the Grail maiden and the Saracen or old Arab, we're talking Arab proper. We're talking the Seas of Jokta, Night Fair Feast, and since Ruth the Moabitess of the Bible was the grandmother of the biblical King David. The Moabites, all the Moors, right? So your Moors science is Moabite science, Moabite magic. <sighs> And Islam was just born. I like talking cold for all to rock. I like rocking with that talk because it lets you know who their antichrist is. Preston John, King David, the biblical King David is the Christian antichrist because he's anti your fake ass anointed. He is the Muslim antichrist because he's anti your fake ass anointed. You would call him Dijon because he's coming with that heat. He's coming with that fire. He's coming with that magic. Awa said, I'll never fail, David. I'll never lie. I will restore the house, the throne, and all generations. Alahua. We're talking Balthazar, man. <laughs> Descended from the Magi King Balthazar, man. 
Let's get it as we near a dismount and press the 99. Belteshazzar is Daniel's name. Hey, <laughs> I'm going to show you how all this come together. Man, love to the Templar who, who were reading this. He said, man, that's Daniel. That's says each name. Daniel and his friends were given, carried a meaning associated with a different Babylonian deity. Right. So instead of Danny L, their names were changed to this Baal worship deity, right? So Abednego, Ab, Abednego means servant of Nebo, like Nebuchadnezzar. Nebo, defend my boundary or defend my king. For example, Belteshazzar, the name given to Daniel, means Baal protect his life. The meaning of the name Daniel is Awa is my judge. So they they trying to switch his frequency to this Baal, but I'm just talking Bays and L's. Shout out to uh, Chavez L Bay or Bay L Bay. You know what I'm saying? It's it's right there in our face bone. Don't Bay L us with the drop. You know, if you're going to be in the class, you want to start talking about cons and kings and Genghis cons and historians, and then you link our drop. <laughs> Letting us know that you're in the classroom. But then you write a book and you don't even mention where the water is connected to. So the Nagas that really want the water won't find it from you. Unless they're in your blog, they ain't going to find us. <laughs> they're going to end up somewhere else, right? Just like they're trying to put Daniel somewhere else. But we're just talking Belgezar. You said what about Belgezar again, man? <laughs> what you say about Belgezar, man? Presta John, the king of the Islamic Jews. God damn. The king of the Hebrews. King of Israel. King of kings. Rex Negus is not the king of Islamic Jews. But he's the king of Khans. He's the king of the world. He's the king of the earth. Under heaven. Khan David. So I guess he would be the king of all hijacks included. He descends from the Magi King, Belteshazzar, the Moor, King of Arabia and Africa. Damn. So now Preston John is an African king. He ain't indigenous no more. Since he was a French Moor as the founder of the Merovingian dynasty, King Merovec, since he studied and mastered the mystic arts under the mystic Turk Sufi Hazdai Ben Shruper. These aren't Americans. Since he was the ruler over four Islamic Turkish dynasty, that means he had you in subjugation. That doesn't mean he's a Islamic. At first, three dynasties converted to Nestorians, right? So this is what we got. And then they say, you know, all these converted to these old king renowned for wisdom, back to the wisdom of Solomon, back to the house of David. The Almex are the Shishir. These are all Hebrews, the Karakanah or the Karakatai or Khanate, the Karakatai, Kathay, and the Kofar al Tarak, Kefir means infidel to them. Kafir means unbeliever to them. And this is why we know that this is their antichrist. Why Belteshazzar? They're putting a the bell on him to protect his life. Let's keep going. Daniel 5, verse 12, for as much as a sur surpassing spirit and knowledge and understanding and interpreting of dreams and declaring of riddles and loosing of knots, were found in the same Daniel, 
whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called and he will declare the interpretation. And of course, man, by, you know, chapter seven, <laughs> the king was starting to see something. Wow. Oh yeah. He's over there having visions. <laughs> and Daniel's letting him know with these great beasts and these four kings and the meaning behind this judgment. Here is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts much have frightened me and my countenance was changing me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Dan's over here popping off and he's raised to the highest station because Hawa keeps proving him time and time again, whether he's taking him out the furnace without being scorched, you know, he's being proven. Belteshazzar, they say from Akkadian, meaning protect the life of the king. Okay. Babylonian name Daniel or name given to Daniel after he was taken into exile, right? Kiliab taken into the court of Genghis Khan. <laughs> Nebo, uh, okay. Nebo was another power they served. According to the name of my God, the purpose was evidently to affect Daniel's naturalization and alienate him from the worship of the creator. Yeah, he tried to, you know, give uh, Daniel a short fuse, can redirect him, hijack his frequency. The name represents the spirits of the Babylonian gods that Nebuchadnezzar worshiped. Right. Right. Thus, the king saw himself as the most high God because he refused to acknowledge Daniel's God as the most high God. Nebuchadnezzar lost his sanity over protecting his fame and fortune. It, wouldn't, it was not until he renounced his sins that the giant tree that grew strong touching the sky for all the world to see was restored to his sanity. The most important part point here in the Bible is that trees are people, a human intelligence tree of life can be seen in the, the section of the brain cerebellum where the dreams occur. So that tree of life is also right in the center of your mind bone. <laughs> and it's just some food for thought, just some food for thought. We just popping off, man. I've been, you know, just doing some wave surfing, thinking about Preston John, man. Remember this forums.mmorpg.com. Shout out to the fam who's bringing all this together. Preston John, aka David, the priest king. And then he has this Dajal and this Carbon 12, Mars, Seth, Satan, Seth, Ship. I mean, he, we, I can't follow all this, but. I, I do see the jaw. We'll start right there. <laughs> and uh, you know, some some good, some good dropping here. Back to this cafe. In its youth, the legend encouraged the exploration of the land route between Europe and Central Asia and the Far East. In its middle age, it assisted the, the discovery of the direct sea route to the Indies, even at the moment of his death. It was still strong enough to lead to the identification of Cathay with the Chinese Europe or the Chinese empire. Carpini made a passing reference to the black Cathays, right? The Nago ne Negro <laughs> Cathay, black Cathay is Cara. Cara is black or melanated, who he claimed were Christian in all but name. So they're not Christians but they have Christian ways, but they're not Christian by, by name. So what are they, Nestorians, man? <laughs> the Hebrews, man, they had recently been conquered by the Mongols or Genghis in them. But the Prester was not among these people. He had moved to the adjacent land of India, major India, superior. If one is permitted to interpret the black Saracens who are also called Ethiopians or Abyssinians as a re 
reference to the car or black could tie in the 13th century it is worth nothing excuse me worth noting the term ethiopia was so imprecise and not to justify its location in africa body bag without supporting evidence which in this case is not present Preston John Carpini wrote, live beside these black Saracens. Genghis Khan tried to invade his land, but was repelled by the Preston. Whoa, who sent against the invading troops what sounds very much like explosive charges, fastened to the back of horses and set off at the right moment by suicide soldiers. <laughs> but another version of Carpini's account told a different story, so they don't know. So one story saying that Genghis Khan was repelled by Preston John. I mean, he got some explosive charges in return. <laughs> Preston John and his son David. We're talking about the same time period. With David Sauslin and Roger here, Roger. 1200, 1100. Were described as kings of India. Superior or major to whom the Mongols used to pay tribute. Genghis paid tribute. Islam was paying tribute. Genghis Khan, who Preston John Legend and his sources say he's from a place called Moal, M-O-A-L. You change the L to a B and you got Moab right there in your face, man. <laughs> However, put it in to this practice by invading the land of Preston John and defeating King David. Not Preston John, he defeated his son, perhaps, and then took another son captive, Daniel. The victorious Preston is in the tradition of the stories of 1145 to 12 and 1221. The, the defeated Preston fits in with the traveler's tales of, of the second half of the 13th century. It's a lot of drop in this joint, you know. I'm just connecting this to job flow. Oh, yeah. This Naga also, you know, has been in the classroom and has linked our drops. So no matter where we're going, we see the drop don't stop. You know what I mean? I mean, they're in that 2020 con drop drop. <laughs> but at least we know that they're connecting what? Hawa, primordial waters. <laughs> How would they got to say about Hawa? See? Come on, man. <laughs> now they go into chaos and universe and they, they like to take the drop, but they also like to flip it. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I haven't even dug on these, man. You know, we got to dig on this stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. They put the whole drop a while earlier for them. Hey, hey, okay, all right. I got to dig on it eventually, man. You know what I mean? But obviously my nigga, they in the classroom, man. Hey, hey, the water for sharing the drop. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to see what this Dijal flow is all about. You know, connecting what we can for the dismount. For the dismount, man. Um, another drop talking about the Antichrist. You know, connecting it with some swan knights. This is from sambali.blogspot.com. Press the John self-described fulfill some of the promises he offered in the correspondence. All right, they're talking about the Preston John letter. I'm just belly flopping. You got the drop. You can read the whole thing. The letter to Manuel also gives apocalyptic, apocalyptic utterances. These accursed 15 nations will burst forth from the four quarters of the earth at the end of the world in the times of the Antichrist, which means anti their Christ, anti their power. Christ means anointed, anti their anointed, and overrun all the abodes of the saints, as well as the great city, Rome, Wah, which, by the way, we are prepared to give to our son who will be born along with all Italy, Germany, and, and the two Gauls, British and Scotland. We shall also give him Spain and all the land as far as the icy sea, the nations to which I have alluded according to the words of the prophets shall not stand in judgment on account of their offensive practices, but will be consumed to ashes by fire, dragon fire, which will fall on them from heaven 
like Elijah. Pastor John was in effect claiming to be the promised king of the east of the pre-crusade prophecies. Yeah, they, they prophesied that this naga going to come destroy all of them, right? <laughs> and then they got their twist to it. King of the underworld. All this drop, man. They got volcano flows. President John's popping out volcanoes. <laughs> the chimney craters of the earth, man. President John's going crazy. Uh, here's an interesting part right here for the dismount. Could we just talk in this y'all? At no great distance is another island from which constantly the sounds of drums, lutes, uh, fiffles, fifes, and other <laughs> musical instruments and the noise of dancing and various amusements are heard. Sailors who have passed this place believe that the Dajjal or the Antichrist occupies these islands. Now we're going to get into the river of stones and the sandy sea. Back to the San Banya. And I mean, just before we go further with Dijon, back to this, you know, Presta connection with the Balthazar, three Magi and all this, we were talking about the Karakan, Karakan, Hawa, Karan, Kawa leaders. And right after this, Joseph, you know, was taken out the picture. He was replaced by a chief Balthazar. You know what I'm saying? He stepped into position created by Joseph Maria to win peace with the Spaniards. Now, you know, I, I jump right on this, obviously, and say, look, man, you did you come to hijack them to bring them into treaties? Or is winning peace, you know, love to the Templar? <laughs> he said, hey, man, that's Daniel, man. I said, whoa, 1800s Daniel typology? And could winning peace with the Spaniards or you know, whoever would be a similar situation like Daniel being raised up and, you know, winning over the Pharaoh or winning over the king of Babylon for them to give peace to these Hebrews. You know, now he's rocking with the power of Israel. Now there's there's peace coming to the tribe. I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But I <laughs> love to the Templar. Are oh, we just talking Chief Balthazar? I'm just coming right from the con, 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 man. <laughs> Talking Joseph Maria, the most prominent figure in the car, con, Karan, Kawa, <laughs> Kawa. Uh, he, he, he's running the Spaniards, you know, out of their missions, man. They, they're all fairness, Yosef. Eventually he gets killed by uh, some Apaches who really were part of the scheme to assassinate the leader of the car on Kahawa. And here comes Balthazar stepping into the picture. Balthazar, <laughs> three magi, is clearly a Naga. So he was a, a round baby JC. Hey man, are we just talking Joshua? Are we just talking the real Joshua? You know, but they all know that he's a Naga. I mean, they even got a black face tradition. <laughs> I'm getting back into the, the jaw, but they got a black face ceremony that they were dressed in black face to play the character of Balthazar. Then they finally got a prominent resident of the African descent to take the role. So him being a Naga is a real thing. You know what I'm saying? He's a saint, a Naga saint that they are venerating in blackface to this day, my nine. <laughs> We're talking the Magi, man, right? In Abyssinia, old name for Ethiopia, a mixed multitude. I'll be seeing you, Chief Balthazar, huh? Let's go. So, You know, we take our time and, and just, you know, connect it all back to the Dijon. Back to the Dijon. So now they're talking about sailors who have passed this place, believe that the Dijon or Antichrist, anti their Christ occupies this island. 
Pastor John's letter mentioned a river of stone, sandy sea, can also be interpreted as representing volcanic activity, like, I don't know, Terra de Fuego, the ring of fire, three days journey from the sea are mountains from which rolls down a stony waterless river, which opens into the sandy sea. As soon as the stream reaches the sea, its stones vanish in it and are never seen again. In our territory is a certain waterless sea consisting of tumbling billows of sand, never at rest. None have crossed this sea. It lacks water altogether, yet fish of various kinds are cast up upon the beach, very tasty, and the like are nowhere else to be seen. The river of stones is part of the quite unusual reference to the San Banya River that sequestered the lost 10 tribes of Israel. And we got that it might be connected where Asia connects to Antarctica or Australia, which might be right where that Terra Fuego flow is. The reference to the San Banya and Jewish literature appears to describe volcanic events. We also find in Preston John's letter to the to the Emperor Emmanuel mention of the salamander or dragon and the fireproof clothing that it was supposed to spin. So now we're back to that armor, that that dragon armor drop. Next time, you know, I want to dig on this Wan dynasty. They say it started with Kublai Khan. You know, a little a little after the takedown of the Prester, but Juan means Juan, like the Juan Khan, like John, right? You put a J, you got Juan. So something about this dynasty is either taking the title of John or, you know, is still in the lineage or bloodline of John. But we're talking Kublai right here, which would be the seed of Genghis Khan hijacking the title Khan. Marco Polo. Uh, that TV series, you know, on Netflix talks about the mythical Christian warrior, Preston John, dodged a hijack, man. But, I mean, they were saying that this, this uh, Preston character, you know what I'm saying, was so intriguing that that third season, if there was a third season, this third season would have a lot to do, you know what I'm saying, with Preston John. And I'll leave this article so you can read about it, man. But we all know that they stopped after the second season for a reason. <laughs> it got too good. You know, it was getting too good to us, man. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's a bunch of supernatural flow. And it says, but, but season two also lays the groundwork for season three. But there was never a season three. Nah. There was never a season three, my night. So something about you know cutting off uh this flow here they didn't want you to know they didn't they didn't want us to know oh yeah this this man is pressed to john he said we've all heard the stories neon says descended from the magi cast shadows in the night resides by the river of heaven the san Banya, which imparts everlasting life i mean dang it sounds real biblical all of a sudden Who's departing everlasting life? We're talking about the founder youth. He's cunning. He's merciless. The Pope interjects the hand of God. His vast army sweeps undetected across the land, leveling faithless villages and cities. Our crusaders have long prayed to me and his army. I've sent emissaries in search of him. Managa, the whole crusades was in search of Anaga Magi. Prester. John. And how does this connect with their Dijon? You know, we're going to get more into it next time, but I'm just circling back to this great, uh, you know, information because this Dijon in Arabic, a person or being with which in some narrations has been considered among the greatest enemies of what they call the Iman al Mahdi. It is mentioned in narrations that Dijon appears at the time of hardship and famine. Mm, like the end of the world, he will deceive and attract a group to himself. So this is what they're writing about Preston, John, but finally be destroyed by Iman. <laughs> some say he'll be, 
Some say he'll be destroyed by Jesus, man. <laughs> that's what, <laughs> and that's when you realize, hold up, man. Your antichrist is the same as the Christian, you know what I'm saying, situation, man. <laughs> there ain't no difference between the Christian antichrist and the Muslim antichrist, nor the Christian savior and the Muslim savior. And then you realize it's all the same invention of deception to get you out of code, putting another power before your power. You ain't thinking tribal no more. You're thinking religion. What, what tribe are you? They repping for their tribe. What tribe are you? The jaw comes from the root form, Dodge Lam, Dodge Jim Lam, meaning very deceitful. The word Dajah in Hebrew means enemy of God. <laughs> Dodge means enemy, all means God. Dajah, Dajah, okay. Just like all or ill means God. Example, Israel means friend of God or triumphant with God. So Dajah means enemy of the creator now. <sighs> Ain't that the kettle calling the pot black? <laughs> Who's the enemy of who? What God are you worshiping? What God are you worshiping? In the New Testament, in Hebrew and in Jewish doctrines, the word Dajah means the enemy of God, composed of the word Dash, enemy all God. New Testament only exists in the letter John, the apostle, and those who deny their Christ. So they actually mentioned the Dajjal in the New Testament, letting you know they're talking about the same person. The Christian Antichrist is the Islamic Antichrist, which is why they don't really big up David like that. But they have to still, you know, say son of David. They still got to steal the title, right? It only exists in the letter of John the Apostle. <laughs> And those who deny their anointed, the father or the son, are called the jaw. In the English translation of the Holy Books of Christianity, Antichrist has been considered as the equivalent of their de jaw. De jaw is the Christian Antichrist. And anybody anti-Zeus, anybody anti-Jupiter, Managa, would be anti their anointed, considered as the equivalent for which for it which is the Greek corresponding word as we read in the first letters of John. Dear children, this is our last hour. As you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> yada, 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 man. So we see it clearly that the Christian Antichrist is the Islamic Dijon. Their al Messiah, ah, Dijon, deceitful Messiah, right? So they got all these uh, descriptions. One eye is, one eye is. It says that the, the Dijon will imitate the miracles performed by Jesus. Come on, man. So the Christian's looking for Jesus, but this person's going to imitate Jesus and make them not believe in Jesus no more by performing miracles. Like this is how sick and twisted these motherfuckers are. When in reality, the JC is the antichrist because <laughs> he's the anti, the actual anointed. And he's the one that's been imitating. He's the one that's caught up in these phantasm duplications and fake miracles, walking on water, <laughs> turning water to wine. While the real Magi are stopping the sun in, the, in its track, stopping the sun from moving, stopping the moon from moving, stopping the waters, waterfalls from flowing. <laughs> the Joshua is really popping off. Their, their JC's performing fake ass miracles, healing the sick, raising the dead. Who would that sound like? Don't it sound like their JC is their, is their own Antichrist, is their own Dijon? The latter done with the aid of demons. He will deceive many people, such as weavers, magicians, half -care. Don't this sound like JC, man? This actually do sound like JC. Wow. <laughs> I 
Lawa. I, I think that's their Dijon. I think they got it twisted, man. But, you know, you got the lake, man. You know, he's in all these traditions. The feet of the Dijon. Yeah. With the Dijon's power to influence gradually disintegrating, ultimately allowing for the re re recognition and worship of God among along Islamic ideas to prevail throughout the world. So that they have to wait for his power to disintegrate. <laughs> so then they can try to get some control in a period similar to the period of time it took for nascent Christianity to rise to the Roman Empire, man. All this Jesus Christian flow. Why is it all linked together all of a sudden? Y'all got a common enemy or something? Y'all got a common enemy? <laughs> yeah, even in, uh, yeah, there, you know, look, Islam.fandom. The Dijon, false messiah, one of the major signs of the last hour, it will claim to be Jesus. Only one person is going to claim to be JC, <laughs> and that's the Christian messiah. That's the Christian Christ. He's the only person that's going to claim to be JC. David ain't going to try to claim to be no Jesus. You think David's going to come back claiming to be Zeus? You think the press is going to claim to be Zeus? The only person that's going to claim to be this is the Christian anointed. And I think the Christian anointed Zeus is the Dijon. And that's what we're recognizing in real time because ain't nobody else going to claim to be Jesus. <laughs> it will perform similar miracles like he did. Uh, man, have the Arabic word kafir, dis disbeliever, written on his forehead. So this kafir is going to be on the forehead of the Dijon. The kafir, K-A-F-I-R, is on the forehead of the Dijon. One-eyed, confused people, brainwashed people, that the Dijon is God. Whoa, only one person speaks like this. And that's Jesus. <laughs> Only the Christianity anointed talks about being God. Jesus is God. David doesn't come like that. David doesn't claim to be no JC. David ain't claiming to be the creator. I think their JC is the Jean. Right. Dragon Ball Z got the drop. Dragon Ball Z got a lot of drop. They got their own, their own Dijon character. True power is gained by those who are destined to have. I, Dijon, was chosen to carry such power. Will you deny it? It would be the biggest mistake you ever commit in your entire life. Dijon, mostly known as Emperor Dijon, immense, powerful ruler, conqueror of the Emperor of Zions before the Zion tough. War of the planet Vegeta. So he's the conqueror of the Zions, emperor of the Zions. Zion like Mount Zion, like David. Oh boy, get the Dragon Ball Z drop, man. Cause we just talking to Kofar al Tarak, man. Kofar al Tarak. They just said the Kefir's on his forehead. The Kefir's on his forehead, right? <laughs> we rocking out, man. With the Kofar Al Tarak. What did we say about the Kofar Al Tarak? Since we got to go back in our own classroom, man. Uh, let me let me turn my fireplace down, man. Yeah. Uh. Talk on it, man. I mean, the masterpieces of Hebrew literature, selections from 2,000 years of Jewish. You know, you go to click on it for the rest of the time, man. By Kurt Levy. Right, so Let go. Kofar been whipping up on Persian ass, man. Right, he slew many of the Persians. And so he can't be no Islamic Jew king. He's whooping up on Islam. And the king of Persia fled only with only a few followers to his own country. He fled to his own country with only a few followers from the Kofar. They 
they showed him much honor and sent a dispatch to the coast for their allies reporting reporting the matter to them. Who's the allies? The Jews. In this case, we're talking about the 1200s. We're not, we ain't talking about the Jewishes. We're talking Hebrews. So these Hebrews took counsel together and resolved to propitiate the king on account of the Hebrews who were in exile. Now we're talking exilarchs. Ooh. Then the king entered their land with an army, his army, and stayed 15 days, and they showed him much honor and also sent a dispatch to the Kofar out to read their allies. So these Kofars are allies with these Hebrew. But wait, I thought the Kafir is going to be written on his head bone, but the Kafir means disbeliever, but the Kofar or the Kafar are the allies of the press star. I mean, is y'all seeing what we see? The Kofar or the Kafar are the allies of the press star. <laughs> but at this moment, what does Benjamin of Tadula got to say about this? Last time we read about David disappearing, walking on water out to Benjamin of Tadula. We're going right into it. There can be little doubt that the Kofar, Kafar, Kafar, unbeliever, right? Infidel, right? All referring to their power. Torah, 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 a people belonging to the Tartar stock. We're just talking about Israel, man. Tartary, Asia Major are identical with the so-called subjects of Prester John. So these Kofar are in the kingdom of the Prester rocking with the Prester like we just got, you know what I'm saying? What was that? Prester, we just watching Prester 58, man. We watching Prester John 58, confirming again, the connection between the Kofar and the Hebrews, the confirmation between the Kofar and the Kefir <laughs> with this Kefir, Kafar, meaning disbeliever or infidel, they say. Yeah, man, <laughs> we got them right where we, we got them right where we want them. Infidel, the Dajal is sometimes said to have the word infidel or kafir or kofir written in, in between his eyes, man, right? Because he got it right there in his pine cone. Very important. Kafir will be readable only by the believer literate or illiterate, <laughs> non-believer, let him be educated from Oxford or Harvard, but not be able to read it. They won't be able to see clearly what the Kaffir really means. Love the Tracy let Kaffir disbeliever. Why? And why, oh, why? Is it equivalent with the Antichrist of Christianity? And why, oh, why is Kaffir also the Kofar al Tarak, and they're whipping up on so much wow. Persian, Sultan, Islam, Mohammedan behind that they're called the demon and adversary to these Persians and Sultans and Islam and Moorish science, whatever. The Kofar press of John King David was their adversary like Joshua was the adversary. We got to go back in Joshua 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, where he's mowing down all these tribes, all these tribes that eventually made a confederacy against you and me. We are their anti Zeus. We are anti their power. We are anti their fake ass flow. Turning the Kofar into the tribe of unbelievers because they weren't rocking with your power. They're identical with the subjects of the Presta or the people in the kingdom of the Presta of whom so much was heard in the Middle Ages. They defeated Sinjar in the year 1141, back to Yellow Dashi. This was, however, more than 15 years prior to Benjamin's visit. My naga, we're talking to Kofar al-Tarak, 
Benjamin seems to confound the goos, goos, G H U Z E S, with the Tartar hordes. The Kofar army was victorious and slew many of the Persian hosts. Many Persians were slain by these Kafar Kofars, which is how they got their name as infidels. And the king of Persia fled from these Nagas with only a few followers in his own country. Now, now a horseman, one of the servants of the king of Persia, enticed a Jew whose name was Rabbi Moses to come with him. And when he came to the land of Persia, this horseman made the Jew his slave. Wow. To judge from the above passages where the allies of the Jews are described as infidel. The allies of the Hebrews are described as infidels, are described as infidels, are described as kafars, infidels, body bag for the illusion. So infidel means kafar, which the, the Dijal got written in the middle of his head. <laughs> <laughs> and the allies of the Hebrews are described as infidels or kafars, my naga, kafars, my naga, infidel, kafar is kofar, who is described as infidels, sons of goose of the kofar altara. And we just got up here, wait. They belong to the Seljuk clans who had become Mohammedans before Islam was born. It was just the Mohammedan tribe. Tribes of Muhammad in it. But the Kofar. Connected a land and the house of the Preston. There's so much Kofar drop. We got to take our time with it to connect Preston John, the allies of the Hebrews, right? Exilarchs and the masterpieces of Hebrew literature, the Kofar are allies with these Jews in exile, or these Exilarchs, right? Okay. Because they're being called infidels. Mm, lost tribes. <laughs> the Kofar Alter Rock were not Christians, but their purported relationship with some of the lost tribes resembles that of Preston John. That's three sources we just got connecting the Kofar with Preston John that they want to call the Kafar or the Dijal. Fake miracle worker. <laughs> yeah. Paradise. No, this is false. Can't be from paradise. The, the Dijal will claim to be JC. Here we go. Only person claiming to be that is the Christian anointed. Is that the Antichrist? <laughs> the Antichrist or Dijal must occur in the last days. Well, I guess it's all happening. I guess it's all happening. He will be Jewish. Whoa. He, you mean like Ashkenazi or you mean like actual Hebrew priest king? Khan? <laughs> I mean, we're just talking the Dijal and the Kofar, Kafar, Altara. We still got our fire burning. <laughs> we still got our water flowing. The water monarch is for tuning in to the 99th installment of the Preston John investigation. Hey, tune in to one hundo, because one hundo is one. And we made it back to the one, you know, connected to our source, our power, most high over everything. Hey, hi to all my nagas that have ever contributed to this investigation or just drop nation in general. 
you know what I mean? Because it all leads back to the tree, you know. We'll be connecting some of that tree of life next time. Some Sambanyan flow, some Shambhala flow, some Ofer Filipino gold flow. My naga, we got so much to talk about. I want to get on the Louisiana purchase back into that lost city in Louisiana. Maybe talk a little Marvel. We still got to connect some Annie Yam flow and the Voynich manuscript must continue in this investigation. Hey, it's a real thing to surf the way with you because you are the truth. And this is where that fire keeps burning and that water keeps flowing. I'm just talking founder youth. I'm just talking Preston John, the water for tuning in to the Preston investigation. Allah, wow.